Yeah. All right, Hotep family, welcome to the Pro Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio. Today we're going to discuss something that's pretty important, and that is the question of whether Blueprint for Black Power by Amos Wilson was never evolutionary literature or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the uh, people, you know, if, you, if you're joining in right now, you know, obviously drop a like, but I also want you to drop uh, a random number between 1 and 858, okay? So just, just as you come in, just give a random number between 1 and 858, all right? And, and that way, you know, we can get this program started. But first, before anything uh, happens, hopefully, you know, as people are coming in or settling or what have you, you know, I'd like, I'd like to introduce, you know, the co-host or the guest today who's in this Prove Me Wrong uh, and that is uh, Aframac. So Aframac, <laughs> Optizor gave us a number six six six. So Aframac, give us uh, uh, not too much of a random number, but all right. <laughs> God, l- let us get an introduction. Uh, like 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 what, what what's happening? Tell tell us tell us tell us who you are, and and why and and tell us whether you think uh, Blueprint for Black Power is in fact a uh, a uh, revolutionary book. And you guys got some weird random numbers. They said 666 and 420. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, those, are not, those are not random. It just shows what the mindset is. Yeah, look, hey. Uh, hey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get it as well, well, I am. Uh-huh. I am here as a representative of Garveyism in the classical sense. And, and um, what we're going to do is discuss the methodology of Amos Wilson. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'm here to prove any one person wrong. More so, it's that I'm here to just elucidate the different methods, practical methods that have been used in the past and in the present to move towards liberation. All right, all right. That's cool. Sounds fine. Sounds great. Uh, So we can kind of jump into it. Not too many uh, people showing up, so make sure y'all do y'all likes and uh, shares and whatever. Uh, But... Let me, uh, let's, let's get into it, right? So, Blueprint for Black Power, I'm going to say it's an evolutionary literature, all right? Uh, you said earlier, right, that Amos Wilson was not a revolutionary, correct? I, I said that he was a revolutionary. Oh, you said, like, he's not, like, in the sense of a militant or whatever, but more like, you said he's not a revolutionary, but he's allegedly perhaps the greatest black revolutionary theorist in the past 50 years. Okay. Well, mili- militant, militant is an adjective that can be violent or nonviolent. Uh huh. So um, in in. Mm-hmm. So wait, I'm just I'm just trying to figure it out. Are you saying that he is or isn't a revolutionary? He is a, a revolutionary. Okay, so that's interesting. All right, so why? Where do you? How do you? How do you? How do you get to he's a revolutionary? Like like just let people understand why you would even say that. Why would you say he's a revolutionary? Like, like, what, 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 right, let me say it this way. Qualities of a moral order are measured by deeds. Okay? Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, what, by way of deeds, would let you put Amos Wilson as a revolutionary? Not just any revolutionary, but, well, apparently, according to, uh, according to you, he's uh, the, uh, you know, like, the greatest revolutionary theorist of the last 50 years. So why would he be past everybody since 1970. Well, if, if we were to use uh, Malcolm's description of mm-hmm. revolution, as well as the Khalidian, uh, after Khalid Muhammad, definition of revolution as positive, transformative change, and we look at Amos Wilson's corpus of work and what he'd done, and particularly the, theory, the theoretical method, as well as the practical methods, that are documented in the blueprint for black power, it is obviously positive transformative change because within the realm of psychology and within the realm of just teaching black people how to understand what's going on around them and how to navigate through a terroristic adversarial system, Amos Wilson 
laid down the blueprint. He laid down the way that we can construct our own system dedicated to us that is only going to serve us and no other people that oppose us. I mean, that's obviously a revolutionary. I don't see how anybody can classify that as anything other than a revolutionary. Well, I mean, all right. Well, here's the thing, right? You say revolutionary, I say Nkrumah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, for some reason, you're saying that Amos Wilson was more revolution, was a greater revolutionary theorist than Nkrumah. Is that the case? Um, or did you want to qualify well, that with America? It's, it's a little bit. Amos Amos Wilson and Kwame Nkrumah are contemporaries, so it would be a little bit difficult. And at the same time, um, the Na- National Black Council associations actually worked with Kwame Nkrumah in his development of theoretical consciencism. So if you look at the rebirth of African civilization with Blueprint for Black Power, as well as consciencism, you kind of have an African philosophical king triumvirate where different people in different industries and different aspects of life and our experience use their expertise to build liberation, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's something that affected us in all fields, right? Because no, not one of us today, if you are black or African, can say that you are not in some shape or form influenced by either Amos Wilson, Amos Wilson? Cancel Williams, or Kwame Nkrumah. So you can't necessarily juxtapose the two because they, that, in man. many ways, worked in tandem. Well, I mean, I don't know about that. I, I, if you said uh, Kwame Nkrumah, definitely. Uh, but most of us, I don't... Like, Chance of Williams is another one that I would put far to pass Amos Wilson. And even him, in I wouldn't way. say... Uh, if, if you were to go about with... You know, particularly if, you're, if you were to compare Destruction of Black Civilization to Blueprint for Black Power, I would say uh, Destruction of Black Civilization is hands down the more revolutionary literature. But in uh, what way, specifically? In what way? Okay, so that's 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 really what it comes to. So I'm surprised that you would even say that. Because, I mean, I thought you said that he was a revolutionary, but now that you're saying he is... Well, I mean, he... Because because what the reason, the reason that I'm trying to say in what way is because when you start to talk about specifics, then you're starting to talk about whether you, someone was dealing with the theoretical or the submaterial versus the practical or the material. So the thought is not necessarily the same thing as the act, but they both work in the feedback loop in African philosophy. It's harmonious monism. So I have to know what specifically, how, how is it particularly applied mm-hmm. when you say that destruction of black civilization is more revolutionary than blueprint for black power? Well, here, here it goes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. What is a revolutionary literature? That's actually a very important question. What is to, a revolutionary literature? To you. you say? Yeah, what is a revolutionary literature? And, and then, yeah, what is a revolutionary literature? Let's hear that. Well, again, I would say that um, using the Khalidian definition, a revolutionary literature would be a literature that leads to positive transformative change. Positive transformative change. Okay. And so what is a never, re, never revolutionary literature? Well, I, I'm not really sure about the definition of, of never revolutionary. If I can assume that never revolutionary is something that leads to a sort of reactionary homostasis or, or a lack of progress, maybe. Um, if I can describe that definition, maybe a revolutionary literature could be something that turns you in circles. Turns you in circles. Okay, well, here's another thing, too. I want to I wanna say this. Uh, when it comes to... Because that, that's one of the issues over there. Positive change, right? Reform, for instance, is positive change, you know. You know? It can be and it cannot be. Exactly. Same with revolution. Revolution can be positive and it cannot be. But the point is that reform. Exactly. Reform uh, can be positive transformation too. So I want to know, like, what would you consider reformist literature? If well, if not... I mean, rev- revolution, mm-hmm. revolution encapsulates an entire though? system. All right. But reform is only a particular policy. So one is general and one is particular. You so feel you like say reform is mm-hmm. so when 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 we're looking at the solutions given by yeah. Amos Wilson, do you feel like yeah. they are actually challenges to the whole system, or 
do you feel like there are reforms for the system? Or, I mean, like, like just, just a little well, bit better for black folk, in a sense. When you, okay, so I, I would assume that when you say system, you're talking specifically about the United States of America. Well, that's the thing. Who, what was Amos Wilson talking about in the Blueprint for Black Power? Well, I mean, in the book, the, the Blueprint for Black Power is based upon African consciousness. And all throughout the literature, um, Wilson juxtaposes African consciousness against the American empire. Does he? All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in showing examples uh, to the contrary, mm -hmm. right? But I'm going mm -hmm, to sure. I'm going to give you something because I just said to myself, you know, just maybe ten minutes ago, I said to myself, or let's say twenty minutes ago, you know, I, I put like five minutes on it, so it didn't really take much time. But I said, what is a revolutionary literature? And I said, look, I would identify revolutionary literature just to keep it simple. Would be I want you to get three things for it. So I say, look, maybe a revolutionary literature clearly identifies an opposition, okay? Uh, formulates a way to overcome that opposition, right? And then out outlines a future without that opposition, all right? And I would say that, you know, and, and I, I wrote that, you know, with Nkrumah's handbook on revolutionary warfare, you know, in mind, where clearly he, he identifies imperialism as the opposition. He formulates a way to overcome imperialism through... Uh, guerrilla warfare, right? And he outlines a future sure. outside of that, uh, uh, outside of imperialism, which would be, you know, pan-African socialism, right? That would be revolutionary literature, yeah. all right? Now, never, mm -hmm. now, now, I said, look, I'm just going to take the opposite for revolutionary literature, right? Now, revolutionary literature really has no clear opposition. It kind of just rattles off inconsistently, you know? On the one hand, it's this, and then sure. the next hand, that's an ally. You know what I mean? Like, like on the one hand, it's kind of like, uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> your second favorite person, uh, to read the shade, I'm just messing. But, you know, <laughs> but, like, kind of like, you know, th like, at one point, to read the shade has an enemy who is, uh, the, the, the immigrants, and the next time he's, uh, he loves them. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's, he's doing a Haiti thing, you know? But, like, 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 basically, a lot of times when it comes to at pan African, you know, quote unquote, American national circles, you know, the same people you don't like are the same people you want to work with, you know? Like, like, like and, and obviously, for Amos Wilson's example, it's like, you know, maybe he might say something bad about the church. And later on, he's like, well, if we get the church together. Or maybe if, maybe sometime he might say something bad about the Democrats. And the next moment, he's like, well, if we get the Democrats to work for us. And, and the next moment, you know, you know, like all the time, it's just one thing off inconsistently. Next one is how he has a way to overcome any opposition. No, sorry. Yeah, has a way. No, no, sorry. The revolutionary literature has no way to overcome any opposition. But they might have a shotgun way, you know, which is uh, like one thing that you're going to notice is how the blueprint for black power uh, for those who read it, and I, I finally finished it, you know, after eight years, I guess, right? <laughs> but but uh, one thing you notice is that it's like a shotgun effect, you know? You, you're talking about, you you know, you, you just lays out a million solutions, right? And says, you know, pick one, kind of, uh, which is which is all well and good. But again, like I said, some most of them, I mean, if you really look into it, most of them are just like, 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 like I guess the phrase is red herrings, right? And the third one, I would say the future, the future... I mean, the other one is that, you know, it has no future without the opposition. And this is probably really important, right? Because it actually, because I, I wrote down these notes, and it, and it comes back to what you were saying about uh, positive change, where I said it has no future without that opposition, just possibly improved conditions for, quote-unquote, the community, you know? So a lot of things that he outlines is, in fact, yes, positive transformation for, quote-unquote, the community, but... The community is like, like like the white power structure of America, which is allegedly which would allegedly be the opposition here, is still present, notwithstanding. You know? And so when it comes to that that outline, that definition of revolutionary literature, where I'll repeat it, has no clear opposition, it just rattles off inconsistently, has no way to overcome any opposition, it just shotguns it. Right and has no future without that opposition. Just possibly improve conditions for the community. Blueprint for Black Power fits all three. What do you say to that? Um, I, I would say that that is exponentially <laughs> inaccurate, especially if we you know do just a simple textual analysis. All right. All of these pieces of literature are coming from the point of view of the author because the author is the one who wrote it. 
Now we look at you know you look at grifters like you know the the founders of um, soda? the abysmal dominations of slavery or the hashtag people soda like Americans. <laughs> you know they, they're 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 capitalist, right? So you know fraud sheet is is a free market capitalist, uh -huh. while the other interesting individuals are welfare capitalists. Okay. And in that you know context, of course, they can never escape that system because their entire bread and butter ideologically and philosophically comes from that system but when you examine amos wilson's work it is a work of garveyism and he literally mm. writes it in the book mm. and when you say garveyism that's not just necessarily an isolated thing in a vacuum that is a historical method that was developed through time many aspects of our condition and of our movement and of our societal position are because of the plantocracy or the plantation capitalist economy that we exist in, the language that we speak, the clothes that we wear, the food, the diet that we eat, and on and on and on and on and on. And it's impossible to say that you can have a, a qualitative change without quantitative change, I think would be inaccurate if not contextualized, because the way that you're describing Amos Wilson's work without looking at the definitions and even saying that you could bog it down, bottle it down to, oh, this solution here, this solution there, this solution there, without bringing the context of the fact that it is literally a systems text and revolutions is, is about a systems based transformation, I think would be a complete misreading of it. No. Even going to your to your to your three points. Let, the let three me, points that you said. Well here's the thing. I mean here's right. one thing I really want to highlight. I want to highlight this for most people, right? And that is, and I, I want people to understand that in the back of the book, like, like basically, here's how books are, right? Books kind of give you the cheat code in the back. You know, a lot of books, not, not necessarily my books because I don't do the bibliography, but the bibliography is pretty much a cheat code, you know? And, and, and you kind of can look at, uh, you kind of can look at where a book is coming from based off of the bibliography, you know, based off of the back of the book, all right? So... I want you, I want anybody at home or anybody, uh, you know, anybody listening, anybody who has the book, right, to look at page uh, 500, uh, sorry, 859, okay? 859 is where the bibliography starts, right? Uh, and actually, let me ask you this, brother. Is the Wall Street Journal, do you think somebody who, do you think the Wall Street Journal is revolutionary literature? Or do you think that you can Wall Street. Wall Street Journal? You think that's a revolutionary uh, newsletter or whatever? I would say it's a newsletter that revolutionaries could use. Okay, and what about New York Times? It's also a piece of information that um, revolutionaries could use. We're right. not necessarily in. We're not necessarily in you know the 18th century, so we don't have to fight against feudalism anymore. Feudalism. So. Okay. All right, uh, let me say this. So you look at the bibliography, right? Uh, wait, are you there with 859? Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to estimate that there's maybe 120 books between uh, 859 and 864, okay? I mean, maybe sure. a little less by, you know, I counted on one page 20, and I think there's six pages. Obviously, the first page doesn't have 20, but, you know, let's just say it's around 120. How many Africans, how many black Africans could you see cited in the bibliography, right? I would count around 12, okay? And when you say black Africans, are you talking about African names? No, not just African names, but, you know, like, for instance, Du Bois is there. E. Franklin Frazier yeah. is there, right? Yeah. Uh, the first one is obviously uh, Kwame Akoto, right? But for the most part, yeah. most of them are Wazungu. Right? Like 90% are Wazungu. Mm -hmm. And of the people mm -hmm. who aren't Wazungu, right? Only like four yeah. of them are what you'd call radicals in any sense. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so now this book, the bibliography of this book is, is like, like for instance, I would say this. I, I mean, I know people wouldn't want to hear this, but I would say if a white person wrote this book, all I would say would be, they should have cited more people of color. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. That's all I would well, say. Well, are you are you saying are you are you saying that the composition of the ethnic composition of the bibliography 
is determining of the revolutionary capacity of the text? I'm saying this, right? That as you read the text, you realize that he is, for the most part, rehashing the ideas of uh, Wazungu capitalists. All right? And I would say that that's inaccurate. It, well, we're going to accurate. we're going to show it because we're going to have we're going to see the pages of the book where he actually does repeat the Wazungu capitalists and say we could do this for ourselves. For instance, the chapter that well, I was just reading well, today, <laughs> the chapter I was just finishing today was let's go do an African stock African American stock market. You know, here's what these African American here's what these here's what these Wazungu say about African American stock hey. markets. Hey, right? Hey, no, hey, here's what they say about agree, stock markets. I agree with that point. Of course. But but the point being that if if your resource is, hey, look, white people say that the stock market is this is the history of the stock market according to these white folk, and then here's what we and we should do the exact same thing inside of America, right? That is yeah. that is not uh that is not in fact transforming the uh fundamental system of America as much as it is just uh including black people into the American system. Well, that that's definitely not accurate. Um, it you, it requires an understanding of, of Garveyism and the historical method of Garveyism. Like I said, we're gonna we bring gonna evidence. Reach. We're gonna bring evidence. Huh? All right. Yeah. Oh, well, so okay, that's what okay. I'm saying. I, I, yeah, because you so, you're so, just saying you're just saying it's not accurate. People at home are like, no, you know, I'm, I'm to, scratching their head. The point because you're you're making a lot of claims. You're making a lot of claims that I know are not true. And the hey. stock market point. I mean, you had commercial exchanges in the African motor production. So to say that you can't have a commercial exchange and that makes you. But who is he basing it off of? No, no, no. Who is he basing it off of, though? Well, I, and I, what, I was about to get to that. But uh, you see, the thing I, is this: ask you is, want to. What I, what I want to ask is, uh -huh. do you want to go through your examples first and have me uh, answer them? Or like, how do you want to do this? All right, so, all right, so, all right. First, I'm gonna start off with these random pages, right? So, sure. obviously, the random pages were six, 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 four, twenty, and six, eighty, seven. So let's look at page six hundred sixty six. All right. For sure. We're gonna look at. So we're gonna start with the random pages. Then I can probably give you guys the images. Well, actually, you could do your. Uh, you could do whatever you had prepared, and then I can show you guys the. Uh, well, it depends. What you want to go first or second regarding well, the Well, well, I mean, I'm just um, based right. upon what you're saying. Six sixty six. I'm just trying to find examples that counter your points. Well, true. Well, tough luck. You, you won't be here forever. All right. Everybody, start making dinner. Because I, off the top right. of my head, I already have a few. Look, six six six. All right. So we're gonna go to six six six, and what we see is where communities have established truly active organizations for monitoring banking activities and applying pressure when necessary. A uh, home mortgage lending to blacks has, in general, markedly increased. The, he's going to link the Sun, the City Sun from uh, '93, right? Uh, a, a week of the City Sun's '93 paper. So, for example, in 1992, because of organizational surveillance, Bank America Corporation of San Francisco increases home loans to minority and low-income customers nearly 50%. It pledged to make $12 billion available for community development lending over the next 10 years. In 1992, Chemical Bank of New York City increased its mortgage lending to minority borrowers by 150% above a year earlier. It pledged $750 million in community investments uh, from Chase Manhattan, so on and so forth. However, it must be kept in mind that these increases were based on exceedingly small or low percentages to begin with. Uh, great discrepancies based on race and residential areas remain. The overall quali quantity of lending to minorities, especially to blacks, remains small. Consequently, pressure on banks by community groups must be initiated where necessary, uh, continued whenever, wherever it is already maximized, and increased wherever it is insufficient. The 1989 Home Mortgage Disclosure Act requires banks to release mortgage lending data by race, age, and income of the applicant. The type of information an activist community group needs to rationalize and organize its activities to improve the living conditions of its areas. So what does that mean? All right? I'll, t I'll tell people what that means. What that means is that he said... And, 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 I, and not me saying it. I'm not saying it. He's writing now that uh, the banks are not giving us enough money. So we should, as a community... That is not what he is writing. That is absolutely... I just read it. Writing. All right, look, again, he says... I mean, but... <laughs> look, 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 hold on. What do, you, what do you mean? I just read that he said... All right, he's reading the City Sun. The City Sun is saying that the banks 
uh, gave uh, our, our pledge to make $12 billion, so on and so forth. And he's saying this. Look, this is the most important part. Uh, pr consequently, pressure on banks by community groups must be initiated where necessary, right, to, to, to get these mortgages. And we can use the law from 1989, the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, in order to, as a community group, right, uh, organize our activities to improve the living conditions of our areas based off of pressuring the banks to to uh, give minority to give home loans to minority and low income customers that's not so, so, if, so what is that if, if you live if you if you live in a society where Malcolm if you X live in a society go. colonization go, go. right you live in an, you live in an economy revolutionary right, that it. has Say predatory it. lending institutions Say it. That revolutionary will use, that will use their mm -hmm. power to exploit the mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. within that said economy it would only make common sense that you would engage within an internationalist organization to make sure that that type of economic terrorism doesn't occur okay but again i'm not saying look i'm not saying it doesn't make sense right what i'm saying is that that's an evolutionary that's not revolutionary. How is that? How is that revolutionary? No, the you're question is how one, is that revolutionary? I'm just taking no, no. We are going through the passages that the that people are people are dropping because I'm trying to show you that even if I pick a page at random, I'm trying to even if I pick a page at random, you will find you won't find anything revolutionary. No, no. I, 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 there's no way that you're going to find people even, are going to listen. Up, come, look, come look, on, come look, on, look, come look. On, people. Please. People, no, if you open up, uh, what, what's the phrase? If you open up, uh, uh, a handbook on revolutionary warfare, it don't matter what page you go on, you're gonna see something revolutionary. But, but, but what I'm saying is this that because the book is huge, now we can go to your examples later, okay? We can go to your examples <laughs> later. I'm All just of my showing, examples are responses to what you're saying. I'm just showing the people. Right. Sure. Go ahead. I'm showing the people. I was, I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. You just, you just look, look. It would it would be helpful mm -hmm. for the audience mm -hmm. if you would contextualize each passage with the chapter that it exists in. Okay. What's what's the? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these chapters are evolutionary. Uh, this one's the how relation is, of white owned chapter, banks. Look at this. The, the name of the chapter is the relationship of white owned banks to the black community. Like you already know, so, there's nothing revolutionary there. So, so to speak about the nature of the owners of the plantocracy to the most exploited people within the plantocracy. Look, to speak about the relationship if, between those two groups. And Krumah, if and Krumah, if if Nkrumah, uh, told you, like, if, like, like, look, 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 I'll say it this way. Any other revolutionary literature mm -hmm. would tell you that look, these banks, you know, or right, let's say Dessalines. Dessalines is a real revolutionary, right? You you tell Desilines yeah. you say look here, uh, Bank of America is not giving enough money to blah blah blah. You know what Desilines will tell you? Coupete, mm -hmm. bullet That's it. That's all I'm saying. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, 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 that's it. Here's the idea that you're missing. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Here's your idea. You're you're acting as if Amos Wilson's position mm -hmm. is that there can only be white-owned banks. Those are the only banks that it, that can exist. And you're acting as if his position is that capitalism must be here forever. But but look, if 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 your solution look look here. But this thing is this that he outlined a solution to this problem of banks, and he says we should organize. He's telling the people, you should organize. Uh, community groups to pressure the banks to give us some more money or to give us home that's loans. That's not what it says. That's that's just not what it says. I just because read it for the people. What does it say? Some, but, what does it say? Hold on. What does hold it say? On. Does it not talk about predatory practices within this chapter? Within the Is chapter? Is not talking about it within that, within that paragraph? Uh, read it. Read it. Read it for people. Because, because we, okay. we're not going to just take your word. You can supply evidence. Read it. Okay, so uh, when, it, when it says that um, in this paragraph, for example, in 1992, uh, because of the organizational surveillance, Bank of America Corporation of San Francisco increased its home loans to minority and low-income customers nearly 50%, okay. right? It pledged to make $12 billion available for community development over the next 10 years, Okay. right? So 
just in that, just right there alone, that's innocuous, right? Because because on one instance, right? Let me turn on my camera so I can make a face like, come on. <laughs> no, literally. All right, literally. go on, yeah. But hold on, but hold on. You're acting as, you're, you're acting as if because, okay. Bruh, I, I gave you all okay, of it on, beforehand. Because, because, because if, I don't, I don't want to jump around mm. in throughout the book, but what I'm trying to say is that this specific chapter is talking about the relationships that these predatory institutions have. Mm. To See, we're saying you, you, I, t- right? I asked you to quote so it. You quoted time. no. What I asked you to quote it. You quoted that the banks were giving more money to minority and low income customers, right? That's not predatory at all. That's why I'm saying we can't, yes, we cannot, is. we cannot, giving more money. Have you, to, heard, have you heard of the subprime mortgage crisis? Yeah, but that was, when was that? That was um, um, during during the dot-com bubble to When was that? 2006. This is 1992. But that was happening back then. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so. So th- you're th- saying subprime mortgage lending was not happening back then? I, look, what, what I'm saying is. Amos Wilson had no way of, of Amos Wilson did not articulate that. Okay, he had no way of he had no he did not articulate that in this chapter one. He had no way of knowing okay. that there was gonna be some bubble uh fourteen years okay. after he passed away. You know like I like twenty something. No, I don't know. But but what, this, uh, this literally no, but this literally was written during Reagan's bubble. Was it not? But during Reagan you said? Yeah, when when Reagan was boosting the stock market. No, this was written in 1990. This was written in 1990. Not as much as Clinton, but they're making like record profits. All right. Again, this this he he he's asking. He right. That's what I'm saying. What you're what you're what you're saying is actually opposite of what he's saying. What he's saying is that he wants more. Actually not. He's saying he wants more minority home loans. He's saying he wants more of those loans. He's saying that he wants fair treatment in the economy. No, right. no. Where does it say that? Quote it. We see the paragraph. We see the paragraph. Quote it. See what I'm saying? Look, I said we have I, to supply I, I, evidence. Okay, okay so okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to a physician. Go to the next page. Exactly. Because there's no way there's no way that that's because, in this paragraph. Because you're not – if you – okay. If you open up message to the people and you, you can find so many different pages and message to the people that would make Marcus again, Garvey look like again, an Non-secretary. There are so many different non sequitur Non sequitur. You're talking about what you're not we're saying. talking about blue paper for Amos Black Black Power. Okay? I know, I know. I'm, I'm saying this Amos no. Wilson is a Garveyite. Okay, maybe not. But if you like that's what that's what he that's what he, he said. But but he lit, no, but he says it in the book. Oh wow, okay. He also says, look, he's also begging for loans from the banks that you allege are he's doing not predatory. Begging for loans. So he's, what what he's does hold on a second? Hold asked, on a second. Hold on. Hold on. on a second. Come on. What he, does he, he, pressure okay, on. on banks by community groups must be initiated when necessary? Continued whenever. Uh, wait, he says the overall okay, quality so of lending to minorities. In the entire blueprint for black. Power, Let's go to the next Wilson. one. This is what you're, this is We're giving position. four random pages. That was a random page, huh? and it showed you that it was never evolutionary. Let's go to the next one. You can do what it Bible? to any book. You can take a page. Bruh, let's go you to can, the next can, one. So you don't want. So you you say you don't want to go to random pages. Is that what you said? No. This is. This All right. Let's go to the random page. Let's go to four twenty. Literally. Four twenty. That, that was a oh, look. That was an oh L. Six 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 was an L. Six 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 was an L. All right. Four twenty. Let's see if we have the same problem. Let's see if you have the but same can, can excuse. I, can, I, can I respond and then and then we go? Yeah. Sure. Why not? This is what I'm saying. You can go on any page in this book and be like, hey, look. Uh, exactly. Hey, look. He, uh, hey, look. He's using a British terminology. No. Hey, look, he's using a terminology. No. Like literally, every single. Page I wasn't doing do that. that. I wasn't you, doing that. Hold, 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 hold I, uh, people, 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 no, people, let me, people. Let me know. explain why. Let me explain why. British if terminology. you do not contextualize it uh-huh. with respect to the thesis of the text, and more particularly the thesis of the chapter, you're not reading it properly. That's not proper textual analysis because you're not. Doing it in light of uh, according the to you. Of the text. Look, what I'm saying is this: I read the book cover to cover, and I'm just looking at like what? Like this is a classic? But we're gonna keep going. 420, all right? Uh, sure, let's go. You know, I mean, look, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do this decontextualized way because you know not everybody's a textual anal- a- analyst, but we're gonna do the decontextualized way. Then we're gonna see whatever evidence you think you have. And that's about it. All right. But, I mean, you you read the book. I mean, you definitely know that he says that he is a Garveyite. 
You definitely know. Anybody can say they're Garvey. Look, man, Tariq Nasheed says it's Garvey. Like, like, that means something, though. <laughs> it don't it? mean nothing. No, it don't mean... Look, man, look, look, look. I, all right, let me tell you guys my background a little bit, okay? I was maybe 20, right, when I got involved with the UAM, United African Movement, right? So a lot of times when you see TAP at the bottom of a video, that was recorded by... Uh, what's his name? Some, uh, some guy, something brown, right? He records these videos because at the time... In Brooklyn, they were every lecturer worth their grain of whatever, like every black lecturer around the world, more or less. Most of them, a lot of them, were making their like making speeches at uh, in the middle of Brooklyn at what was called the Slave Theater at the time, and that was where Al Sharpton had his come up. Oh, the, the point is this: that Al Sharpton was the president of that organization at the time, right? So, so during the time, uh, so Altimatics Jr. was the chairman. Al Sharpton was the president. He got a stipend and everything. He was at every damn lecture, okay? Al Mansour came through. Amos Wilson came through. Uh, uh, Dr. Clark came through. Dr. Ben came through, right? Baba, 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 so on and so forth, whatever, right? They all came through and spoke right in front of Al Sharpton. He's the president of the most revolutionary organization in, the, in, in, the, in, in, in America, more or less. Or, or not revolutionary, but the most informative, scholarly organization, Right? Al Sharpton. Sure. Okay. At one point, at one point, the organization uh, decided they were going to only allow black folk in. Al Sharpton didn't like it. He, sh you know, because they had two meetings. They had a Saturday meeting and a Wednesday meeting, mm -hmm. I think. Right. Al Sharpton broke it up and he made what was known as uh, what well, he has now today, which is whatever the organization is called. You know, of course, I show up to this organization after all this, uh, after Al Sharpton already dipped. But the point being that you can you can say anything. Right, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything, you know. It, so, but, it, it but doesn't you, mean are anything. Are you saying that? But, but are you saying that just because an assimilationist may have found their way in that type of organization, he was the president? Everything in that organization. You said what? No, I'm saying are that saying anybody that? can say anything. Al Sharpton was no, there, smooth that, talking. But, but, but the, the thing is, is that I don't go by words, man. Like, Quality of a, uh, uh, Marcus Garvey said. Lip service and noise. No, do not mistake lip service and noise for bravery and service. Okay? So I'm not going to mistake lip service and noise for bravery and service. If somebody says, he also hey, said look. that this organization is the greatest enemy of the Negro. Yeah, okay. But but my point being that if, if somebody gives me lip service and says, you know, I'm Garvia, that's fine. Prove it. You understand? Know okay, so, so compare. You would have to compare Amos Wilson's method to Garvey's method. You okay. would have to compare the two. And you would have to see how he describes that historical method in the many different passages about black nationalism and the many different passages about African identity and the many different passages about the metaphorical representation of black Americans as a nation in a nation. Which is completely nonsense. A nation within a nation... How is that, complete? How is that nonsense? A nation within a nation... Because a nation, like, like you... <sighs> African Americans are not African Americans. No, they're not, they're not a nation. Exactly, African Americans are not a nation at all. They're a population. Metaphorically no. speaking, not that even is a the little bit. In which he used that how term. how could African Americans qualify as a nation in any sense? He he used the term because he said think like a nation so that you may eventually build the nation. Who, who said that? Marcus Garvey or, or 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 Amos Wilson? Huh? Who said that? Marcus Garvey or Amos Wilson? Both. Okay, well, yeah. In different ways. All right, well, well, yeah, when Marcus Garvey said it, it makes a lot more sense because he was, he was, but see, Marcus Garvey, the difference between Marcus Garvey is that Marcus Garvey let African Americans know that they're in a white man's nation. You know, telling, so telling, Wilson. telling, it, telling people that they are, in fact, already a nation is nonsense. Think like a nation. Yes, but telling them that they are a nation or saying that they are a nation or wondering why you don't get uh, treated like a nation when you are a nation, it's just nonsense. A lot, a lot of it's think, nonsense. I think, I think it's, 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 it's really facetious to say that because Amos Wilson says think like a nation. No, so he didn't he say think like a nation. He said you are a nation. That's the difference. Which, which is just nonsense. He's saying nation metaphorically. Let's go to four twenty. Literally there. Well, look, I, I can show you because I remember I had to like stop reading the book. Like after I wrote my book and I said let me pick up Blueprint for Black Power again. I stopped reading after I couldn't read past. Oh, I, I, look! I've said it going to 420. Let me just we're going to go to 420 soon. I'll just show you one of the passages that he said it, 
and it's like it's it's not metaphorical at all, and it just gives you pause because you're just like. What so so he about? says that he says that we are a separate nation with citizenship. What page is that? No, I'm saying I'm asking. Does he say that we are a separate nation with citizenship? A separate nation. Oh, here it goes. Right here, page seven hundred and four. He says, in the context of, a- I'll read it for the people at home. In the context of the African American community as a nation within a nation, the placing of large deposits in development banks or loan funds by individuals and institutions would be similar in effect to the expansion of money supply by the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. Like, what? what is he talking about? He's saying think like a nation. No, he, he's so saying. We are reading him. We are reading in him. In the context of them as a nation, they should do this. Yeah, in the context think of like African American community as a nation. nation. As a nation. Within a nation, the placing of large deposits banks, deposits in development banks or loan funds by individual institutions will be similar. It's like, what are you talking about? There's not. How, okay, so but, but what does not. that mean? Exactly. Nation, <laughs> you know what nation, like, it? what does that mean? And he said it throughout the text. You know, I showed you an example I know, earlier. I know, literally, he's using the same thing Garvey used. No, Garvey, Garvey. Ugh. Anyway, let, let, what I'm saying is this: one thing. Have I, you read message to the people? Of course, I read message to the people. Uh, but what did he say in that book? Well, I, I remember off the top of my head, like, verbatim, but I, I read Like, what does he say about African people within, quote-unquote, Western societies? What, what, what you, you, you say? Well, well, what is it verbatim? Does, does not he say things like one African people? That's, but that's different from saying that you are a nation. Because there's no way oh that you're gosh. a nation. If you are, okay, okay, okay. All right, we'll, we'll move on if from that I point because... Here, hold on. If I put Garvey here, mm-hmm. middle Malcolm X, and then Amos Wilson, and mm-hmm. Malcolm X literally said that the position of black people in America in the police state autocracy of America is like domestic colonialism. Now, can you ju- like, can you compare... You said Malcolm X said that? contrast... Domestic colonialism. Yeah, that's that's with, different from nation. nation within a nation. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, different. Way different. Colonialism so, and, and nation. Be, colonialism is when one nation colonizes another nation. No, co- colonialism is when you have a colony of another nation. When you are a colony of another nation. You're, but you're not a nation. A colony is not a nation. What were you before the colony? Uh, what were you before the colony? Uh, that wouldn't matter because you're a colony now. <laughs> you know what I mean? How does that not matter? Well, I mean, How? look. First off, it's not relevant for the African Americans because they weren't. Hold on, hold on. The, 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 because it's like it's like you read through the part where he talks about black nationalism. What part is that? Where? Right? Where? Which part? In what let's book? To, what book are you talking about? Page. All right, let's let's do four twenty. All right, let's because let's do four twenty because what we're doing is classical black nationalism. Classical black nationalism, nationalism is literally viewing black people as African nations trapped within a European nation. Yes, classical black, black nationalism, nationalism. Classical black nationalism is uh, sophomoric. That's the trouble. How is that sophomoric? Well, I'm t- that's that's the that's the that like the reason why I even wrote my book in the first place is because I realized that black. Uh, you know, classical black nationalism is sophomore. So, you know, just saying, like, like what you're doing is what's called an so appeal to authority. So, what to the abolition of chattel slavery is sophomore? Classical black nat. Wait, hold on. Let's go to 420 because what you're doing is sure is uh all right. So let's look at 420. You could actually pick a passage and and tell us where you would see something revolutionary. Because sure. I'm looking at 420 so 40, right now. 420. And I'm like, I don't um, see anything. So read the whole page. Uh, w. E. B. Du Bois noted after visiting Durham that there is in this city a group of 5,000 more colored people whose social and economic development is perhaps more striking than that of any similar group in the nation. Okay, it looks like just contextually I could tell he's talking about Black Wall Street. Gotcha. Uh, um, right. Well, the, the, idea, the idea of Black Wall Street is a modern capitalist conception. Okay. If you examine the history of those economic centers within those metropoles of the antebellum South, okay. they're actually based upon African communalism, and they're actually based upon cooperatives. What you had is mutual aid societies that became collectivist insurance companies, and then those built the first black business. So do you feel like Black Wall Street is an example of revolution? I don't believe in the term Black Wall Street. Okay, do you feel like... I believe in the term Little Africa. And I think Little Africa, Mm -hmm. Little African identity within America is revolutionary. 
you think that that's a so you feel like that threatens the art oh, sorry no you feel like that that transforms the larger uh socioeconomic system above the people that, that, in that was a model that could be generalized to liberate black people and it was by garvey so you feel like people black people were liberated from black wall street or, 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 I well, said here's that the thing. it was what? a model that liberation systems like the UNIA ACL were built. So, all right, how about that? Would you would you repeat Black Wall Street? I don't believe in Black Wall Street. All right, would you I repeat Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma? Would I would I create more Little Africa's? Would you Africa create towns? Tulsa, Oklahoma as it was? Green, Tulsa Greenwood as Little Africa, which is what it was called. I would definitely repeat. Little African towns all over the world. Even notwithstanding, in the middle of America, notwithstanding the fact that they had no self-defense uh, to themselves. I would. I or mean, no respectable self-defense. Uh, defense and security is just common sense. Part of a city, part of a you know community development. And you feel like that's something that's control. possible. You feel like that was something that was possible at the time. They just said that instead of using their common sense, that's what they that's what happened. They just you in know. The, in the in the general got. sense, the UNIA auxiliary plan building upon the Little Africa model at Tulsa and Greenwood was a good idea, and I think we should repeat that in the modern context. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let me see if this is even. Let's see. Let's see the rest of 420. Socialist E. Franklin Shaver in commenting the uh, business acumen of the Black Durham businessman noted as he read the lives of the men. Blah blah blah. blah. Durham began as a financial district as early as 1907, and many publications throughout America it was called the Wall Street of Negro America. The strength of its, one of its largest firms, uh, the Mechanics and Farmers Bank, is demonstrated by the fact that it helped most, if not all, the Afro-American businesses in Durham to survive the Great Depression, a feat which the great majority of American small businesses were unable to match. One observer wrote that a common feature of the Negro business interests of Durham and the fact that not one of those groups organized failed during the period of depression. Just as the Japanese were able to develop economic success in California at the turn of the century, Afro-Americans were able to do the same. Although other cities throughout the country were not as strong as Durham, Afro-Americans in other cities also developed a strong middle class, which was grounded in entrepreneurship and depressions. In cities throughout the uh, country, entrepreneurship flourished in part because of the structure of racial discrimination. Stories of successful businesses run by free Afro-Americans in both the North and South since the 1700s has been passed down through the decades, drawing ideas from the experience of Afro-American business persons Booker T. Washington sought to organize black businesses nationally. In 1900, Booker T. Washington spearheaded development of the National Negro Business League to encourage enterprise. The league was founded on certain fundamental assumptions which were designed to generate high character, develop racial respect, uh, develop economic stability, and lay the economic groundwork for future generations. It was the economic experience of African Americans, the economic opportunities available to them as they organized to take advantage of them, and the organizational efforts of Booker T. Booker to Washington in this regard that inspired and attracted Marcus Garvey, the consummate advocate of black self-help to the U.S. Okay. All right. So again, uh, yeah, like 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 this right here. I don't I don't see what would be revolutionary here. You know. So uh, something that led to the UNIA ACL is not revolutionary. Uh, and his description, in his description, I would <laughs> his not say. description, how? How so? Well, I'm just saying that his his description more or less. I mean, he he just this, this the, the the reference to Marcus Garvey. Uh, well, I, I would say this was just a list. I don't even know. Let me see what the the list. Uh, let me Did see this, where the list starts. Do you understand that that is literally a historical fact that he laid out? Yeah, it's just it's just historical facts. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily uh, put it as like I said. There's a shotgun method. You know, this is a. Uh, there's no way to over. There's no, there's no real opposition here. There's no way to overcome opposition. There's no Wait, historical future. Is the shotgun method? No. What I'm saying is that it's. Well, I'm looking at this. It says African American entrepreneurial milestones. Yeah. So he's just listing. So on page 417, it tells you what the context of the list is, and he's just saying sure. African American entrepreneurial milestones, and that's that's really what it is. So it's not like, it's not necessarily like you said. It's just historical facts. It's not really. You know, but, but it, it goes he's, neither he's way. Talking about Garvey's usage of the auxiliaries. He based upon he the mentions model. he mentions uh he mentions Garvey. He's not really talking about Garvey, but he he's he does, talking about the historical development of the auxiliary model and yes. the Tuskegee Again, model. Again, the thing is that you're adding more words than he's used. How? No, I'm just talking about. But do you understand right. that at the end of it, it literally leads to the creation of the UNIA ACL. 
I mean, yeah, Booker T. Washington does. Yeah. So I mean, if you if you were to if this was about Booker T. Washington came from a tradition. If this was about up from slavery, right? You you could probably make that case. But we're talking about blueprint for Black Power. But you know what I mean? Literally, the auxiliaries of the UNIA are based yes, off of the Tuskegee model, exactly. which is based off of a historical African communalist model. Okay, but he doesn't say any of that, in a sense. He's talking about the entrepreneurial okay. milestones. You have to. Yes, entrepreneurial milestones. Yes. The, the, no, but this is the thing. This is the thing. And he might even literally. quoted somebody. Hold on a second. Yeah, look, look at here. The above list was adapted and quoted from John Silby Butler. Entrepreneurship and self-help among Black Americans: A reconsideration of race and economics. So he's really just quoting. It might even be. Let me see if John Silby is even. Let me, let me see what that person is even ethnically. But the like, like he's legit. The ethnic composition. The ethnic composition of the source does not negate the historical. Well, it, it might be a Black person, so it's okay. But I'm just saying that. I know, but 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 I mean, but that is literally. Well, the reason story. why. He... All right. Well, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it looks like a Black guy. But look, what I'm saying is this notwithstanding that this isn't even his writing so it's like we can't even make a judgment call but he literally he's, he's just seeing somebody yeah like, he's just he he's just, just quoting I mean, a list he's just quoting uh, a list so it's it's like he's just quoting a list it doesn't really make the book itself you know it doesn't really like i'm saying it's a it's neither it's neither evolutionary nor revolutionary it's just how him can, no but how can you say him talking about the historical methods that led to the UNIA. Like, how can you say that that's not revolutionary? I mean, that's that's not revolutionary though. Why why would that be revolutionary? How is that? No, but no, but no, but how is how is that theory right, which leads to praxis, not revolutionary? All right. So look, basically, you would say that entrepreneurship and self help among Black Americans, a reconsideration of race and economics. You would say that book, notwithstanding, is a revolutionary book. Like, speaking like, of the speaking of the historical tradition of the African mode of production within North American antebellum slavery, yes, it is. Okay, well that's that's not revolution. That like I, I don't know what the book. Well, well, well I don't know what the book. Your definition of that is myopic. Revolution would be if you're just being entrepreneurial. All right, look, 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 like for instance, I'm looking at These this right here. These people weren't even considered humans. No, no, I'm. You're talking about. We're talking about whether the literature itself is revolutionary. Okay. But they're businessmen in an environment here's, where they weren't considered humans. Okay, that's 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 not necessarily revolutionary though. But look, how is that not revolutionary? Hold on a second. Look, I'll I'll give you the uh I'll give you Google Books if you will the summary of entrepreneurship and self help among Black Americans a reconsideration <laughs> of race and economics. I'll give God, you the summary. Hey, it says you in can this... do this. Hey, you can do this about a hundred times, or you can do this with every single book that he referenced. Find something within that book and be like, hey, look, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm finding that, I'm finding you, I'm telling you what the book is about. So the book says, okay, in this okay. book, author John Sibley Butler traces the unique development of business enterprises and other community organizations among black Americans from before the Civil War into the present. He compares these efforts to other strong traditions of self help among groups such as Japanese Americans, Jewish Americans, and Greek Americans. The author also shows how the higher education of black children is already a valued tradition among black self help groups just that today their offspring are more likely to be third or fourth generation college graduates. Butler challenges the myth that nothing can be done to salvage America's underclass without a massive infusion of public dollars and offers a fresh perspective on those community-based organizations and individuals who act to solve local, social, and economic problems. Okay? Uh, again, you know, this book is it's, it's really just, like, it looks like it's just pro-capitalist literature. Like pro capitalism literature, which is not bad to say. I mean, most but, of most of the sources, exactly. most of the economic sources exactly. are are quote unquote pro capitalist. Uh, exactly. In order to navigate outside of a capitalist system, you kind of have to understand the system that you're in, correct? Well, look, what I I mean, it, what what I will tell you, or what what I what I, the reason why I would bring that up is to say that you know I wouldn't necessarily use this as an example of. Like, like, like the, the logic that you're trying to push isn't actually there, you know? He's just quoting so? another book. He's quoting another book, and if that other book isn't necessarily revolutionary, then it doesn't necessarily make his book revolutionary for quoting it. You understand? But that doesn't mean that it's also not revolutionary just because he did quote it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I, I didn't say – I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I, would, I would just leave that one alone and go to the next one, which would be 687. Let's look at 687 and see <laughs> – no, but you you never answered you never so okay so his his 
sighting of Garvey and the UNIA means absolutely nothing there. No, because he didn't cite it. The other guy cited it. I know, but him citing that example to elucidate the no. larger context of African empowerment through African wealth in this chapter. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, you can't necessarily say that that's what happened because it just looks like he just took from the other guy's book. But 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 again, just and the like other guy's book example, wasn't necessarily you're not capitalist. It with the thesis of the chapter or the de- like, no textual analysis. Well, he just whatsoever. ended the list on. He just ended the list on Marcus Garvey, but that doesn't necessarily mean that his whole purpose so, so was. So it's like just. Just looking uh-huh. at what he cited, yeah, that citation clearly and just like and not revolutionary, no context added whatsoever, no connection to the thesis, just and and, and just all it on. says, all you're trying to do, all you says is this: it was the economic experience of African Americans, the economic opportunity available to them as they organized to take advantage of them, and the organizational efforts of Marcus T. Washington in this regard that inspired and attracted Marcus Garvey, the consummate advocate of black self-help, to the U.S. That's all it says. Yeah, and, that's, and, that, and that literally, in 1914, created the UNIA. Okay, I mean, but, I but he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't say that, though. And the thing is that... But, but literally, you, that's what happened. Okay, what about it, though? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But it, I mean, just, <laughs> the thing is that you're dwelling on this <laughs> point. You're dwelling on this point that doesn't... You're dwelling on this point that doesn't actually mean anything. That's the problem. Like it doesn't but, mean anything. But, 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 but you're it doesn't mean anything in the context of this book. You are saying that the book is not revolutionary. Exactly. He's referencing a process of the method that he's promoting that led to the creation of the greatest black revolutionary no, institution but that, like, of modern it's history. It's different. Like the thing is this: that on this page, he's he's lists one, two, three, four, five. Like for instance, he starts off with W. B. Du Bois noted after visiting to Durham that there is a city, a group of 5,000 or more colored people whose social and economic development is perhaps more striking than any other similar group in the nation. I have to say that they're just a bunch of random facts. You understand? So yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not necessarily, you I'm not necessarily. To, you have to know what he's referencing. Yeah, you I know. You have to be intelligent and know what he's referencing. I'm, I'm intelligent, but, but I mean, I don't know why you would say otherwise, but. Because, because, because if you say, if you say Durham, mm-hmm. if you just Durham, and it's like, no context whatsoever. Like, if you don't have context, it seems like just a baseless, empty fact. No, I mean, they're all if you related. Know Marcus Garvey led to the UNIA, right? I mean, come on. Like, the, like, the audience out there mm. can open the book and read through the chapters without, like, isolating a citation and determining what right, so, the All right, so, all right, so, all right, let's say it this way. Let's say it this way. Let's say it this way. You're going to tell me that in this same chapter, this same chapter is called Empowerment Through Wealth, that he mentions. Uh, all right, where does he mention Marcus Garvey and 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 so on? Oh, I guess he does right here. Well, he does right here on page four twenty five. He does mention uh, Marcus Garvey, but he's just talking because about. Because he's a Garveyite, like that's not. I like, mean, astounding. He literally is a Garveyite. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody says they're a Garveyite. Like everybody's a Garveyite. You know what I mean? Like it's not like it's not like anybody <laughs> but, isn't but, a Garveyite. But you know what I mean? Specifically speaking, if he <laughs> makes a claim. If he makes a claim that he's a Garveyite, uh-huh. and you think that he's not a revolutionary, you would have to disconnect him from Garveyism. Otherwise, you would be saying that Garveyism is not revolutionary. It depends on what kind of revolution you're talking about, because Garvey, <laughs> in the context of America, would not be revolutionary. So if you and, were and, an and American... No, no. If you're an American Garveyite, no in America is a revolutionary. So then, why are you saying Amos Wilson is? Because he promoted the nation within the nation context. Okay, so like you just said you just said nobody in America is a revolutionary. Nobody in American identity, to be more specific, is yeah. a revolutionary. So in the context of America, you would not say Marcus Garvey was a revolutionary. Okay. Nobody. So, who thinks of themselves and who operates within the plantation limits of Americanism okay. the, or America? But that's what Amos Wilson does. Amos Wilson no, operates in the plant. Africa, 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 Africa consciousness is all throughout the text, and you know it. No, it's not. It's all African American, so African American, African American. This is not in the text. It's all African American, all African American, all African American. Occasionally, 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 he would say Pan African, but only to tie it oh back with African Americans. I'm telling nation, you. No, no, but, no, but you are literally, you are literally mm. removing the context of classical black nationalism. I. Even if you don't think that, even if you do not agree with classical black nationalism. Uh-huh. 
You cannot say that he is not using that same nation within a nation context that Malcolm X used, that Marcus Garvey used. Like you have to admit to that. No, what? But no, Marcus Garvey was not. Marcus Garvey did not advocate for uh, this kind of nonsense that Amos Wilson is doing. He you didn't know? do it in message to the people. Marcus Garvey would not tell you that you were a nation within America. Why did he promote electoralism? Message to the exactly because you were not a nation in America, so he said, you know, but he, he recognized that you were. Speaking. No, no, he recognized that you, like, you could do what is known as group economics. That's one thing, but to say that you are a nation in America is, again, there's a difference between the, the, the thing that classical black nationalism, if you will, doesn't understand. Sure. is that you know there's a difference between a population and a nation, okay? And easily, yeah, black people are a population in America. They're not a nation in America. Not in the metaphorical sense, not in any type of sense. Because in the literal sense, no, in the metaphorical sense, yes. Within that context. No, they're yes. a population. Because because the thing about the thing that you're not explaining. They about have nothing to qualify know, as a nation. And I know you know this. I, I know you know this because you've studied these texts. Like you studied Delaney and Blighton. There's they no. were African people who wanted to return to their original African nations. That is the context of classical black nationalism. So you cannot divorce the you cannot divorce Garvey. It was Wilson is not context. returning though. Huh? It was Wilson is not returning when you're telling. All right, let's go to six eighty seven. But you know because I don't want people I want people to, you know people at home they, they don't want to just hear you repeating the same thing that doesn't make any sense. You know they want <laughs> I'm, they want to. I'm literally wanna... giving historical references. In no, opinion. you're saying you're saying. You're saying things that don't like like it just doesn't apply. Black I like for instance, how what have in you what read way? Sterling Stucky? No. I have Sterling Stucky, no. Was that the one with the If you have if, slavery? if, you, if you haven't I'm, I'm sorry, but if you have not read Sterling Stucky, then I would have to say respectfully uh -huh. that your knowledge of classical black nationalism would be lacking if you have not read Sterling Stucky. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I mean, he maybe is it's lacking. He's literally the father of modern black nationalist research. Oh, okay. The father of it. Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't read this guy. What, what, what did he write that I should have read? Oh, slave culture. No, I haven't read slave culture. I'm not yeah, into. Very I'm not into. Important book. Slave culture elucidates the point that I just made. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not classical into. Classical black not into nationalism is African people enslaved trying to rebuild and reconstruct their African nations. That's what classical black nationalism is. Okay, yeah. Uh, exactly. That, that would be ridiculous. That's a ridiculous concept. You, you're trying, so to, you're the, trying to reconstruct that in America? The abolition of chattel slavery is ridiculous? You're saying that you would try to... Uh, you're saying that you would try to remake... Uh, what, what are you saying? You're trying to do what? You're trying to make a nation in... You're, so you're, you're, you're trying to make a nation in America. That's what you're saying? That is absolutely not what I said. Okay. What I am saying is that what the classical black national... They are African people enslaved within the quote-unquote new world, however you want to call it. Capitalism, global economy, however you want to call it. Who wished to return to their original African state of being within their African nations. So, classical black nationalism is a desire to rebuild those pre-colonial federations based upon African customs on an international scale. Rebuild them That's where? What it is. Rebuild them where? Well, Africa, Delaney elucidated Africa for the Africans. Okay. Africa is the foundation. Rebuild them where? Wherever African... Huh? So, but look, if you're trying to rebuild them in, in, in America, I mean, sorry, if you're trying to rebuild them on the continent, that's perfectly fine. If you're trying to rebuild it in America, that's just ridiculous. Well, well, wherever African people are, there is Africa, and Africa yeah. exists okay. in different dimensions. Those, those are, that's what I said. Those are, those are, like, like, like I said, that's, that's sophomoric. If and you're... that's not, and, and again, and again, that that pigeonhole is not my position. That's not Amos's position. That's exactly. So why are you position. bringing that's it not up? Garvey's position. That's not Delaney. Exactly. I, if I'm reading, if we're reading, if we're discussing Blueprint for Black Power, and you're, sure. you know, dropping some terms, you know, classical black nationalism. Because nothing I, to do with it. Why I have nothing to do, that to do with it. Is because you're not putting it in context. Well, but the thing is that if I'm reading Blueprint for Black Power and I don't get the impression. That I mean, I mean, and I'm reading it as a book itself, 
right? I spent, it's 858 pages. I read the 858 yeah. pages, and you're telling me about, you know, Martin Delaney's ideas, right? You're well, leaving I mean, the book. I mean, if, if you, and, if and you it, expect to read it once and absorb every single piece of information within the book, then, I mean, I would have to sell a bridge to you. I it's read it slowly. I read it slowly over eight years. But you cannot you know I mean? read a book like this once, twice, even ten times mm. without, you know, go, like you have to read I, these I things wouldn't, over and over. I wouldn't over. want to because this it's just not it's just not even revolutionary literature. That's the point. Uh, let's see. So uh, ego death. The, the fact that you gloss over like every time he mentions the UNIA, every time he mentions African. Well, you could all right, like like actually matter. look here. Actually look here. So ego death for some reason says you aren't bringing up any good reasons for calling this book nonsense. So he's talking to me. Bitter medicine says repeating a revolutionary statement is not revolutionary. Just like me reciting gangster rap doesn't make me a gangster. You know. So I think that actually does apply to this claim that because he brings up the UNIA, because he mentioned the UNIA. That it makes it revolutionary. Because again, but you have to compare. No, look, I could to look. I Why could do tell you. Want to do that? Look, I could tell you that I have a history book from when I was in elementary school, or middle school, or something that references Garvey. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not gonna tell you, hey, it reference like, Garvey. No, but, no, but, I'm not no, gonna no, tell no, you, no, hey, it what, reference what, Garvey. What's so like? What's <laughs> so funny is that like you're removing you're removing the context and you don't want to compare his solutions in context to Garvey's. Like, for some reason, you don't but want Garvey, to... Garvey, again, Garvey would not necessarily be revolutionary in the context of America. Okay? No one is. No, I'm saying no that... Like, like, what I'm saying is this, right? Garvey would tell you to go vote or whatever. Or no, let's say another one. Garvey would tell you to obey the police. Right? In America. Mm -hmm. The police, the NYPD chapter here in, in New York. I'm in New York. NYPD chapter would tell me obey the police, right? But right. You're, you're, if you're, I, I if okay, I tell you, hey, okay. you know what? Compare and contrast Garvey's message to the NYPD. That makes the NYPD a revolutionary mm -hmm. organization. It wouldn't oh make any gosh, sense. Like, but you're but but you're acting as if that's his only message. There's no other building going. That's on what whatsoever. I'm saying. But no you're you're saying you're saying that's what I'm saying. You wanna you wanna compare and contrast. But the thing is that you, if you if you're looking at some of what Gar like if he's Context. borrowing some of Garvey exactly. If he's borrowing some of Garvey, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's revolutionary if a lot of things but, that Garvey said like, I, in the I, context I'm of America. You, I'm in the context of America. You mm -hmm. to add the context. All right. Let, 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 all right. Look, we're gonna just do these two other examples that these people that the people uh, gave. So let's just do 687, 747. Then you can make a case with some context, right? So 687 is black-owned banks, creators of wealth. All right. So he says the review of Table 26 to 1. Uh, and 26.1 and 26.3, adapted from Black Enterprise Magazine, June 1993, summarizes the financials of black-owned banks and savings and loans, indicating that there were 36 and 18, respectively, of these institutions extant in 1993. So he's saying that there were 38 uh, uh, banks in 1993 and uh, whatever. So according to the Minority Bank Monitor, a newsletter published by Creative Investment Research of Washington, D.C., the combined net income of all of 18 black-owned savings associations in 1992 amounted to $4.1 million. Their total assets in 1992 amounted to approximately $1.2 billion, and their total loans, uh, uh, $945, uh, $945 million. Their total deposits equaled $1 billion. The total deposits in black America's 36 commercial banks amounted to $1.9 billion in 1992, and so on and so forth. Let's just go to where this is relevant. Uh, he's talking about Asian banks. So we're going to scroll to seven to 690 just to see what it is. The black uh, black community suffers from a scarcity of black-owned banks. There's another obvious reason. So this is the conclusion. He, he likes to end things with conclusions. Black community uh, suffers a scarcity of black-owned banks. There's another reason uh, for paucity of low monetary res reserves held by black-owned banks. Total of 36 banking institutions serving a population of uh, 30 to 35 to 40 million black Americans spread throughout the expanse of the United States quite understandably could garner but a fraction of the deposits of banking an increase in the size and number of black owned banks and financial services they offer would motivate competition by white owned banks who now take uh, black consumers for granted and will force them to offer more services to the community on more generous terms so he's saying look look look, look at that he says if we increase the number of black owned banks we can motivate white owned banks who now take uh, uh, take black consumers for granted uh, and force them to offer more services to the community on more generous terms kind of like you know quote unquote your boy tangibles you know where it's like hey if we 
if we do something for ourselves, if we make a lot of noise, then these white Democrats could give us more, you know, uh, you know, could give us more, more, more to our community in more generous terms, right? So, you know, again, so thus the presence of a significant number, thus the presence of a significant number of competitive black-owned banks and financial establishments in the marketplace can, in effect, lead to a greater satisfaction of black consumer and community financial needs. As black-owned financial institutions increase in number, size, and influence, their ability to participate, their ability to participate in the mainstream financial and commercial marketplace will be vastly enhanced. This can be achieved through their increased ability to invest in larger white-owned institutions, corporations, and other financial, uh, financially productive establishments to gain significant equity and ownership of mainstream business establishments, valuable uh, real estate and services, as well as access to highly lucrative financial activities now virtually close to black financial institutions and business persons. All of these and other development will permit the black American community to enhance its social and economic power decisively. In the global context of robust black owned banking and financial establishment would do much to empower the African American community to influence urine, uh, US foreign trade policies in favor of economic and political empowerment of all black nations and communities across the African diaspora. Moreover, African American financial power, if appropriately concentrated, distributed, and creatively utilized, will enable that community to act as a financial engine motivating the economic development of other African economies, similar, similar to the ways that white American economies serve as an engine motivating European, Asian, and worldwide economic activity. A powerful African American financial establishment, see how we focus on African American, but a powerful African American financial establishment would provide empowerment and economic opportunities to the constituents of the black American community as a result of its ability to generate domestic economic trade and employment activities to sell financial resources and services to the Pan-African community to engage in investment and export-import opportunities throughout the diaspora and the world in general. We will now discuss a number of options available to African American communities for strengthening institution and economic clout. Uh, and, uh, yeah. But you can kind of see... I mean, probably the most important thing and actually, uh, one thing I don't about have any problem with what you just read. Of course you don't, but that's not revolutionary. That's not revolutionary. But again, it, it's definitely revolutionary. It's definitely towards economic pluralism and an African economic democracy. I cannot. Since I'm saying you're using all these words that he never uses, but okay, I got you. Look, here's the thing with that. But no, he actually uses this. I'm looking for the figure, but he actually uses. Well, it. I was gonna jump to page seven hundred. I was gonna give him some. I was gonna give him the credit. Go to, you know? go to page six twenty. Go to page six twenty. All right, all right. Quick. Hold on a second. All right, let let's, let me just let me just explain to people why that's not why that's never revolutionary instead of revolutionary, right? One thing I said earlier. Six twenty explains why it is. All right. You know what? Let's go to six twenty. Let's go to six twenty. All right, six twenty. What is this? Economic democracy. All right. So true, true economic development and mm -hmm. empowerment of the African American community does not begin with the mere employment of its constituents by other ethnic communities which own and monopolize all the vital and important means of production and wealth creation. They begin with they begin and end with the economic organization of the whole of the African American community under its own auspices, direction and financial control to create opportunity for its constituents through its self-determined commercial and trade organization and activities. Whatever the goals the community sets for itself, even when they may require the cooperation and the financial support of other, other groups, groups, it must achieve mm -hmm. through its own cooperative efforts and financial genius. The ultimate goals of the community, in addition to the acquisition of more jobs, small business loans, and purchasing agreements, must include the establishment of genuine economic democracy in America and the world. Economic democracy refers to the pluralistic ownership of the economy, its productive resources and facilities, as well as well its wealth. By pluralistic, we mean where ethnic groups own meaningful properties in the economy, where the economy is perceived and utilized as a public trust for the benefit of all the people instead of as the property of a particular race, social class, or a small group of races, ethnic groups, or classes. A more complete economic agreement of the African-American uh, community with white and other ethnic communities oh. is one which involves not only their making available <laughs> to African-American businesses, loans, equity funds, and the like, but funds which would permit African-American businesses in the community to own substantial equity established and developing mainstream businesses. business gotcha. economic democracy is facilitated by the national african-american community's development of the leverage and ability to form partnerships to buy substantial partnerships and ongoing mainstream businesses 
concerns to purchase such businesses outright and to invest in worldwide Worldwide mining, manufacturing, and financial ventures. Mm -hmm. Economic democracy involves the coming together of community institutions, organizations, individuals, and investment groups to form large mutual funds establishments in order to purchase influential equity in major mainstream national and multinational corporations. Economic pluralism involves the ideology that black consumers will not continue to support industries and producers where blacks are not substantially represented as investors and owners of equity. Exactly. Black consumers with their leaders would no longer demand only jobs and a few franchises for support of large corporations, but should demand significant equity, Mm -hmm. equity owned by black Mm -hmm. not-for-profit organizations or by profit commonwealth mutual funds, which the black community owns through its investments in them. African American community commonwealth funds should therefore not only invest in the economic infrastructure and development of the community, but also invest in the corporate entities which profit significantly from the community, both here and across the diaspora. Okay. So right there in 620, yeah. right there in 620 is exactly. the context that you refuse, that you just totally refuse to, to place into this, all of his other stuff. What statements. you just read? You totally, you totally No, no, no. What you, you totally, just read? You totally refuse. You totally refuse. Well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing I mm-hmm. refuse to, because it wouldn't have helped your case. Yeah, the reason, and the reason now that we read you it, that, no, you know that the listeners have never read philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. I think they have. That, I have no idea know what they read, they but don't I believe know they did. That this comes from that. Philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. All right, look. It does. You don't know that it, you you don't know that you 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 know that they don't know that this comes from that. I, I have no idea what the listeners I wouldn't I wouldn't put them as not knowing things I feel like they're a very uh, well read uh, group of uh, people. Well, I mean, if you I didn't know that, then you wouldn't dubiously decontextualize this. No, we're we're looking at this. Let's look at this. What you just read was not revolutionary. If this is not revolutionary, not. then philosophy and opinions where he got it from is not revolutionary. It depends on where you're talking about philosophy and opinions. But this is something that Nelson Mandela... This is something that Nelson Mandela... If Nelson Mandela wrote this, would you say it was revolutionary? If Nelson Mandela wrote Blueprint for Black Power? No, if Nelson Mandela wrote this chapter on economic democracy, would you say that that was uh, revolutionary? Well, Mandela Man- Mandela came from ANC, which is rooted in Garveyism in, in Cape Town and Johannesburg. So you feel like so Nelson Mandela I'm... is revolutionary? Huh? Nelson Mandela, as he, as he, as president of South Africa, was a revolutionary. Nelson Mandela, as general of Mkanto Sisizwe, is definitely a revolutionary. As president of South Africa. As leader of Mkanto Sisizwe. As president. I'm asking you as president. Is he revolutionary? As as president of, of okay. South Africa, South Africa is a modern capitalist economy, so no one can be a revolutionary as president of South Africa. Okay. No one can. So, but the point being that he's promoting in six on page six twenty, he's promoting that black economic people, democracy. huh? Economic democracy, economic democracy, mm-hmm. being uh, that black people and white people share in nope. this capitalist and community. Wrong. That's what 100% he said. Hundred percent wrong. Economic democracy and capitalism cannot coexist. You're talking about something completely different. This is what he said. Read nope, what he nope, wrote. Nope, it cannot coexist. It literally, economic capitalism is not democratic, and you know that. <laughs> that he says economic. When he says economic democracy, he's talking about. He tells you what economic democracy is. So, read Did anywhere in that passage. He support capitalism or name capitalism as good. No. He's no. talking about in in this paragraph. It's contextualized in capitalism. Does not Garvey say that Africa should, we should do for Africa what Leon Trotsky and Lenin did for Russia? What is what is what is philosophy and opinions? What does That's that have to? You're where talking he about got this from? This is you. Is literally, where he got this from? It this is, is the same you, position. This is you saying this. You have no telegra- proof. Oh my god. No gosh. evidence. Is, he, All right. He literally writes in the text that he's a Garveyite. There's no I'm evidence using, that this passage. I'm using philosophy and opinions to show you. Yeah. All right. All right. Where's philosophy, philosophy and opinions? Garvey's, what page? Garvey's what page? Garvey's Garvey's what page? Garvey's Garvey's page? What page? Every what time page? I bring it up. Hold on a second. What page, of, what page of philosophy and opinions since you want to do this? What page? Name the page. Huh? Name the page of philosophy and opinions. I took out Name the page of philosophy and opinions. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to open up my notes. All right, open up your notes um, because you're sure. making this up. Now, while you're huh? looking for your notes, while you're looking for your notes, I'm going to read for the audience 
what it says. Okay? I'm just gonna reread it and I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight exactly where he says. He says uh, true economic development of empowerment does not begin with the mere employment of its constituents by other ethnic communities which own and monopolize all the vital and important means of production and wealth creation. So he's already saying, he's already contextualized it in what's going on right now. What's going on right now is capitalism, correct? So he's saying mm -hmm. in the context of capitalism right now, instead what you want to do is you want to have economic organization of the whole African American community under its auspices, direction, and financial control to create opportunities for its constituents through its self-determined self commercial and trade organization activities. Whatever the goals the community sets for itself, even when they may require the cooperation and financial support of other groups, uh, other groups in what context? In capitalism, okay? It must achieve through its own cooperative efforts and financial genius. The ultimate goal of the community, in addition to the acquisition of more jobs in capitalism, more small business loans, small business loans in capitalism, and purchasing agreements in capitalism, must include the establishment of genuine economic democracy in America and the world. Every revolution economic, capitalism is going to have to use parts of capitalism. Economic so democracy that's refers. Actually, that's literally look, not a look, look. Because whatever look, revolution he's describing what he's describing what economic democracy is. Economic democracy refers to the pluralistic ownership of the economy, its productive Which resources, and facilities as Which well is as its wealth. The opposite of capitalism. By pluralistic, but he's going to tell you, by pluralistic we mean where ethnic groups own meaningful, so he's talking about by ethnic groups, own meaningful properties in the economy or where the economy is perceived and utilized as a public trust for the benefit of all people instead of the property of a particular race, social class, or a small group of races, ethnic groups, or classes. A more complete economic agreement of the African-American community with white and other ethnic communities is one which involves not only in the making available of African-American business loans, equity funds, and the like, but funds which would permit African-American businesses and communities to own substantial do you, do you equity and establish and, and developing uh, mainstream businesses. Hold on a second. Let me just let me just explain this to, to the people because you're saying sure. something completely different. Okay? Pluralistic Wait. ownership is not capitalist. Oh, my gosh. Well, see, you're using a different definition of pluralistic. Okay, you're using a different definition of pluralistic. Okay. What's your definition? Hold on. How is, how is plural, pluralism? Plural is the plural, opposite of minority. No, pluralistic means relating to or advocating a system in which two or more states, groups, principles, sources of authority coexist. Coexist. So the co coexist of in the same of production as opposed to minority ownership. No, what he's saying. That's literally the opposite no. of you're, the you're, minority of people only look at it. A state of society in which members are diverse ethnic, racial, religious, or social groups maintain and develop their traditional culture or special interests within the confines of a common civilization. The point being that the point being that he is looking for, and this is what everybody's gonna tell you, he's looking for access into that system that's already in place. He's not changing the system. He's Look, looking to put black people rebel, positive there. transformative change. There right? you go. If you go from, there you go. If you go from yellow you to go. blue, the intermediary stage is green. That's both yellow and blue. Every form of change, you're going to have an intermediary stage from being enslaved to being liberated. So to say that, oh look, business. Oh look, bank. No, oh, look, but he doesn't. He that doesn't. Means it's not revolutionary. Hold on a second. Like, that's not a point. In this, in this point, in this passage, he does not outline anything after that. The end goal here is to share it's economic is democracy. to share exactly to share your percent wise your your uh your population wise with the ruling class. No, it's not. Everything because that in this book is that. Everything in this book is that. Is the opposite of the ruling class. No, which you're using pluralistic. You're using pluralistic. No, you're the using. Economic organization of the whole of the African community is the opposite of that. You're using pluralistic in a different sense. He's not using it in that. I'm using it in its literal sense. No. That's literally what it means. There's no way that you can say that pluralistic ownership of the means of production is capitalism. If you set that on CNBC, they'd call you a commie. They'd call me a commie. Well, pluralistic, if, if you, I said pluralistic? If you promoted pur pluralistic ownership Look, of the means of production... Look, he says it clearly. Anywhere, Look. Black consumers with their leaders, this is page 620, black consumers with their leaders should no longer demand only jobs and a few tra franchises for their support of large corporations, but should demand significant equity in them. Equity mm -hmm. owned by uh, black not-for-profit organizations and for-profit right? commonwealth toward, mutual funds. 100%. 100% no, what? 100% equity where we live. 
that's not revolutionary. What what, what don't you understand about that? Positive transformative change. Uh, the more equity and control. But the same have over system, lives, the same the corporations are still gonna be there. The, everything is gonna be the same except for that you're gonna now have equity in it. That's not revolution. You're gonna control the society that you live in, and you're gonna control. That's not a revolution. Collectively, that is not a revolution. That is not. I'm not. Look. Look. I'm not saying. Look. 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 I'm not saying that's not good. I can read it to you. I'm not saying that's not good. I'm saying it's not a revolution. You understand? Know it really is. All right. It literally is. Hey, do you have do you have the selected writings of Marcus Garvey? Yeah, I'm looking selected for writings and speeches. I'm going to look for it. There's actually two copies of that, so I might not have the same exact pages, but I have that. Okay. So, um, hold on a second. Give me two uh, let me, let me see if I can go to the chapter. Let me see if I can go. Uh, it is... Um, what chapter is this? What, 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 do you have Dover? Huh? Is, it, is yours Dover? Dover? Oh, Do- what do you mean by that? Dover Thrift Editions? Um, is it blue or is it red, black, and green? It's probably a, it's, 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 a, it's a, yeah, it's Dover. It's Dover. It's, it's blue? Um, it's brown. Oh, dang. Okay. Well, what page are you on? 47. 47. 46 and 47. And does it start off with death and in prosecution of a great ideal, the ideal of a free? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. What, what, what are you trying to, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that this philosophy that Amos Wilson is Read it, using read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Okay. Okay. Death and in prosecution of... I mean, that's kind of a bad place to start. No, no, wait, 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 start, where, start, where, start where you want. Start, start where, it's, where it's relevant. Okay, there is, there is mad rush among races everywhere towards national independence. Everywhere we hear the cry of liberty, of freedom, and the demand for democracy. In our corner of the world, we are raising the cry what, for liberty, wait, freedom, wait, hold and Wait, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. What, what paragraph is this? Uh-huh. What paragraph is this? I don't... It, it's, it's, on, it's on 45. Like, it's literally the last paragraph. Oh, 45. 45. Okay. Well, you told me yes, I, 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 right, started, I started a little bit up. All right, go on, go on. Okay. Um, there is a mad, and I'm, I'm kind of looking up, and it, it looks better up, but whatever. There is a mad rush among races everywhere towards national independence. Everywhere we hear the cry of liberty, of freedom, and a demand for democracy. In our corner of the world, we are raising the cry for liberty, freedom, and democracy. Men who have raised the cry for freedom and liberty in ages past have always made up their minds to die for the realization of the dream. We who are assembled in this convention as delegates representing the Negroes of the world give out the same spirit that the fathers of liberty in this country gave out 100 years ago. We give out a spirit that knows no compromise, a spirit that refuses to turn back, a spirit that says liberty or death. In prosecution of this great ideal, the ideal of a free and redeemed Africa, men may scorn, men may spurn us, and may say that we are on the wrong side of life. But let me tell you that way in which you are traveling is just a way all peoples who are free have traveled in the past. If you want liberty, if you, if you want liberty, you yourselves must strike the blow. If you must be free, you must become so through your own effort, through your own initiative. Those who have discouraged you in the past are those who have enslaved you for centuries, and it is not expected that they will admit that you have a right to strike out at this late hour for freedom, liberty, and democracy. In no time in the history of the world for the last 500 years was there ever a serious attempt made to free Negroes. We have been camouflaged into believing that we were made free by Abraham Lincoln, that we were made free by Victoria of England. But up to now, we are still slaves. We are industrial slaves. We are social slaves. We are political slaves. And the new Negro desires a freedom that has no boundary, no limit. We desire a freedom that will lift us to the common standard of all men, whether they be white men of Europe or yellow men of Asia. Therefore, in our desire to lift ourselves to that standard, we shall stop at nothing until there is a free and redeemed Africa. I understand that just at this time, while we are endeavoring to create public opinion and public sentiment in favor of a free Africa, that others of our race are being subsidized to turn the attention of the world toward a different desire on the part of Negroes. But let me tell you that we who make up this organization know no turning back. We have pledged ourselves even into the last drop of our sacred sacred blood, and Africa must be free. The enemy may argue with you to show you the impossibility of a free and redeemed Africa. But I want you to take as your argument the 13 colonies of America that once owned their sovereignty to Great Britain. That sovereignty has been destroyed to make the United States of America. George Washington was not God Almighty. He was a man like any Negro in this building. And if he and his associates were able to make a free America, we too can make a free Africa. Hamden, Gladstone, Pitt, and Disraeli were not the representatives of God in the person of Jesus Christ. They were but men 
but in their time they worked for the expansion of the British Empire, and today they boast of a British Empire upon which the sun never sets. As Pitt and Gladstone were able to work for the expansion of the British Empire, so you and I can work for the expansion of a great African empire. Voltaire and Mirabeau were not Jesus Christ, but well, they were but men like ourselves. They worked and overturned the French monarchy. They worked for the democracy which France now in, enjoys. And if they were able to do that, we were able to. We are able to work for a democracy in Africa. Lenin and Trotsky were not Jesus Christ, but they were able to overthrow the despotism of Russia. Mm -hmm. And today they have given to the world a socialist republic, the first of its kind. If Lenin and Trotsky were able to do that for Russia, you and I can do that for Africa. Africa. Let no man, let no power turn you from this sacred cause of liberty. I prefer to die at this moment rather than not to work for the freedom of Africa. If liberty is good for certain sets of humanity, it is Africa. good for all. Black men, colored men, Negroes have as much right to be free as any other race that God Almighty ever created. And we desire freedom that is unfettered, freedom that is unlimited, and freedom that will give us a chance and opportunity to rise to the fullest of our ambition, and that we cannot get in countries where other men rule and dominate. There you go. We have reached the time when every minute, every second must count for something, something achieved in the cause of Africa. We need the freedom of Africa now. Therefore, we desire the kind of leadership that will give it to us as quickly as possible. You will realize that not only individuals but governments are using their influence against us. But what do we care about the unrighteous influence of any government? Our cause is based upon righteousness, and anything that is not righteous we have no respect for, because God Almighty is our leader and Jesus Christ our standard bearer. We rely on them for that kind of leadership that will make us free, for it is the same God who inspired the psalmist to write, Princess shall come out of Egypt, and Ethiopia shall stretch her hands unto God. At this moment, methinks I see Ethiopia stretching her hands unto God, and methinks I see the angel of God taking up the standard of the red and the black and the green, and saying, men of the Negro race, men of Ethiopia, follow me. Tonight we are following. We are 400 million strong. We are following with the determination that we must be free. The wreck of matter before the crash of the worlds. And then it goes on and on. Yeah. But basically... <clears throat> no relevance. Zero oh, relevance, me. man. But go on, yeah. Well, how are you gonna? How are you gonna do this? I don't know why you just. He, 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 you just gave me a shovel. Position of Angus Wilson is the exact same economic democracy position of Marcus. You Marcus just Marcus. gave me a damn shovel, man. Where, 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 where in the, the world? Economic democracy, in the, uh, passage by passage, line by line, Bruh. by line. Voltaire, Pitts, and Gladstone, Lenin, Trotsky, Bruh, George what? Washington. He say if they can establish a democracy for their people, then we can do it for Africa. And he said this in New York, by the way. He did not say this on the African continent. He said this in a political organization within New York. Bruh. That's where he, that's where he gave this speech. Bruh. He did not give it in Africa. Bruh. So his Bruh. position is the exact same position as Bruh. Alex Wilson. That, what the, bro? Definitely. Bruh, man, look. Absolutely undeniable. Why are you absolutely doing, bruh, 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 look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. Next time you call my show, don't take a bunch of hashish or, <laughs> or heroin before you come on, because that, that was just, come on, right, you on, you Space Jam reaching, okay, you Space Jam reaching, that, That's literally his passage had nothing, within the text, you How? can use ad hominems, but you cannot deny the fact that the democracy position of Amos Wilson, what are you? in that passage, the economic democracy, is the exact same what? position of Garvey, how, when he Garvey said, said because he's literally saying the collective of African people come and strike a blow in right Africa as human beings in the declaration Africa. of the rights of the Negro people in the declaration Africa. of the right that in, is what that is the context bro there's you, nothing here you totally bro you want to remove the context you're trying desperately to remove Bruh. the context he is saying Amos I'm Wilson giving you context this and you're guy. removing it bro Amos Wilson is saying African American businesses and communities own a substantial Asian equity Asian. in uh in in American mainstream corporations. A with, in a nation, because yeah. again, but 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 what I'm saying is this: Marcus you're Garvey. To take away the connection of Garveyism. Marcus Garvey says. Hold on a second. Got Marcus. Marcus Garvey says we can do this. Wait, he says what Lenin and Trotsky did in Russia, you and I can do. In Africa, he he says nothing. In New York, he said that. In New York, he it said doesn't matter that. if you say that. But that's what that, that doesn't matter if you say it in New York because you keep saying you keep saying African American facetiously as if it's a correct ad hominem, and I'm like they, they literally have the same position. I'm saying African American because I'm quoting what Amos Wilson wrote. 
Amos Wilson wrote sure. talk, is talking about integrating into the American no, economy. You cannot integrate and have a pluralistic means of production. Or pluralistic means of production. Again, by pluralistic, he's talking impossible. about, by pluralistic, he's saying a multi ethnic, he's saying a multi ethnic capitalism. That's what he's, he's talking a about. Pluralistic. Among Africa has the most ethnic diversity of any other people on the planet. He's talking about pluralistic with. Wazungu. Why are you being fa- no, but why are you being facetious? How is it? How is it? How is it? How is it? How is it facetious? He's saying pluralistic. Because you know that African people are the most ethnically diverse people on the planet. He, but Mar- Amos Wilson is talking about African Americans and European Americans. When he says sharing African American, American, he says nation within a nation. This is why you don't like the classical black nationalism. We, you want to ignore that context. We read six twenty together. You said read six twenty. He's saying exactly, Af- and then I gave you a textual example. This is textual analysis. And he six twenty. Because he's a Garveyite, so I'm comparing uh, his position to Garvey. Bro, bro, but his position, but Garvey's position was entirely different. It's the exact same position. <laughs> no, it's not. How is it? Oh different? my gosh! Explain, you, explain. Go I ahead, keep explaining ahead, to you, quiet, but you're, you're cutting me off. Look, Marcus. Gar- hey, sorry, Marcus Garvey is saying we can do. We can do, we can have our leadership and all that community development in Africa. Okay? Marcus Garvey, when he articulated. Did he articulates, that convention in Africa? Did he what? Sorry, go ahead. Marcus Garvey wasn't allowed to go to Africa because he was a revolutionary. Do you, but do you, you understand? how that negates your point? How does that negate my point? Because he literally built the organization where he gave this speech mm-hmm. within the confines of quote unquote America. But what he about was doing it? it for but, a larger but, goal. Yes, in in Africa, the, what makes it and what makes it revolutionary? Same. Why? Okay, okay. If you think <laughs> if you think that Amos Wilson is totally disconnected, Marcus America, Garvey why? says, "Look, Marcus Garvey, mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey says, Africa for the Africa, Africa for the Africa." Sure. Right. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Who do you say America goes to? Say that one more time. Who does Marcus Garvey say America goes to? Oh, America is obviously not the property. Who of, does he uh, say? Who does Marcus? No. Who does Marcus Garvey say America goes to? He does not go to the African. Who does he say it goes to? Um, particularly America goes to whoever is in control of America. He it's says not. America for the. Um, America for the I, I don't know I don't know the specific passage. Oh, you don't know the passage. What did he say? All right, he says Europe yeah, for I, the. I, he says Europe for who? Europe for the European. Yeah. Europe for the European, right? Yeah. yeah. He says Asia mm-hmm. for the. For the Asian. And he mm-hmm. says America for, the American. Okay. He says America for the American. Africa for the African. Sure. What, <laughs> Amos Wilson is saying, is, America. Should share with the African American. Did Marcus Garvey say all black people should be in Africa? Did Marcus Garvey say no? But what Marcus? Wait, no. What again? What Amos Wilson is saying is the, the reason why what Amos Wilson is saying is nonsense. What the Garvey guy Amos Wilson is saying. The reason why Amos what Wilson Amos is, is saying is nonsense is because it's putting the cart before the horse. How? Okay. The cart before the horse. What, I'll, I'll explain to you what cart before the horse means, right? Usually, I know, I know what it means, but okay. explain how. Because if you were to have, if you wanted this sort of situation to happen, you would want to have a strong Africa first. Which he literally promotes, but go ahead. In this passage you just gave, right? In this passage you just gave, mm-hmm. he's talking mm-hmm. about African Americans as a community. Nation within the nation in the, in the classical They're not a nation, nation within a nation. He's speaking They're a population. In the, literally. Do you, but, but do, do you understand? Do you understand that the way that he spells African with a K is not within the U.S. Census? Okay. What about it? Do you understand that? I do you understand, understand why he did that. Uh, I I know a couple of conscious people who do that, and it's it's just. If whatever. he said American African, would it be different? If he said American African, it wouldn't matter what he said. Because the reality right, is that there's specifically talk, oh, right. okay, 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 the definition okay. of a nation because just doesn't apply to African Americans at all. 
Okay, it just that doesn't apply to but anybody. That's literally what he means when he says that in the text. And throughout the text, that's what he means. Yeah, I know. It doesn't apply because to anybody. Because he wants us to identify that way metaphorically so that we can eventually build it literally. You can't build a nation. You, 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 wouldn't, you couldn't realistically build a nation within a nation. It's not about building a nation within a nation. It's like thinking like a nation within a nation. You should of never. You should never. So we can eventually. No, no, so we can no. eventually build it. Build it in where? In African philosophy, the submaterial or the realm of thought precedes the material and the anti-material, or everything that's felt and seen. You have to think about these things theoretically before you practice them. That's all well and good, but you're adding things to the text of Amos Wilson. Because because if you remove the context from him as a Garvey, I, I have to I replace ask you, that in the vacuum that you removed it from. He, he, look, look, like I said, anybody could say they're a Garvey. Okay? If if I'm <laughs> telling you and look, the thing is that you can borrow some things from Garvey because like I said, most of us are Garveyites. Like you said, A and C, you know, comes from like is derivative of Garvey. Nam the Ezekiel the derivative. That was not the same as, as in the early days. Exactly. It's, it's just not. Exactly. It's just not. You could say Nam the Ezekiel way. You could say uh, Julius. Uh, you could say Julius Nere. You could say uh, Kwame Nkrumah. You could say all of them, right? Uh, you could say mm -hmm. uh, Joba Kenyatta. You could you could go on and say all of them are Garvey. So they all have different. Like like the thing is that everybody is like you could be a Garveyite and you could be like like it's like how I say is that you could be. Uh, it's like you can have diversity in your ideology, uh, in your ideological, you know, framework, to the point where mm -hmm. you can be a Garvey and a Leninist, you know, like, uh, like let's say. Psychotic. Do you know that he literally says that African Americans in this book should never allow Marxists into their organizations? Who says that? Amos Wilson. Who cares? Like, what about it? The, I mean, the, the point because being... that literally contradicts the point that you're trying to make. No, I'm saying that you can have... You can have a variety of... Uh, of, uh, of, 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 of ideologies within... Why your, would your... he say that if he's an integrationalist? If he's a who? If he's an integrationalist, why would he say that we should ban Marxists from our organizations? Again... That that's that's no the reason why I was bringing the Marx the Leninist the Marxist is because somebody like Nkrumah would be a Marxist on top of being, no he would not or but no, let, let, not. Right, let me give you wait, hold on let me give you an example uh, maybe it was like let's say Cabral or or uh, Second Touré better argument but Second even then, but even that's then. what I mean Second Touré so you Classical can say Marxists don't they classify those guys as African nationalists yeah okay that's what I'm saying you that's not that the point the point I was making was that you could be you could be more than one thing. You don't have to be like a pure like what I'm saying is that sure. saying that he was a Garveyite doesn't necessarily mean that if we're just reading what he writes that it's uh, whatever. Let me let me actually go look at these comments right here. So of course, Bit of Medicine was saying that something was uh, insulting, but let's say so it says, "Hold on, so where does the principle of intermediary change hold true? Did you find an idea like that in a religious text, uh, Jesus? Uh, you read the passage in Africa. Yeah, he's saying you read the passage in Africa. Pluralistic meaning yeah. equity." He said, pluralistic means equity. So economic democracy involves the coming together of community institutions, organizations, individuals in order to purchase influential equity. And that's what Amos Wilson was saying. Economic democracy involves the coming together of community institutions, organizations, individuals in order to purchase influential equity. But again, that's mm -hmm. not, again, this is, when you're talking about revolution, right? Like, like for instance, Garvey was listing revolutionaries. Uh, he was talking about Wazungu revolutionaries. And he was saying... Uh, you know, like for instance, it wasn't that they were, it wasn't like the Americans, like George Washington, was trying to have equity inside of the British, uh, inside of a British colony. He wanted his own equity over his own land. He wanted his own land. No, no, he wanted, he, but he, but, but Britain was out of the question. Britain was removed just like the, just from. Like, just like the, the Urugu is out of the question here. No, African that's what I'm trying to tell you. Your rule is not rule. African identity uh, does not exist with your identity. I, I would agree with you, but but that's not what Amos Wilson is saying. If he's an, if he's an integrationist, as you're implying, he is why saying would he say that, that here. Ban Marxist? Huh? Why no? Why why would he say that we should ban Marxists? What is his motivation Mar for that? Uh, look again. It, like I said, like I said, regarding revolutionary literature, it has no clear opposition. Just rattles off inconsistently. Marxist is no clear opposition. Because again, 
like I said, like you just read on page 620. He says, look, again, he says, by pluralistic, we mean ethnic groups own meaningful properties in the economy of where the economy is perceived and utilized as a public the trust case, for the people, benefit people, people, house of people, Malian people, all collectively and communally owning. No, people. he's talking about white people. What's wrong with you? No, he's not. No, he's not. Then why does he, he say? You can't have white ownership. Oh. You can't. What are you, you talking can't. about? So what happens to the white people in America? What does he say anything about the white people in America? When the African world is built, African oh, people. Oh gosh, you're just making this up, my guy. <laughs> Look, he says, and he he specifically says no one race. He says. By pluralistic, we mean where ethnic groups all... don't believe in race in the biological oh, context. Geez. Look, look, look. Let's just read it, okay? Let's just read it. By pluralistic... No, RBX don't believe in race in the Indian biological He uses context. race! His race is socioeconomic and political. Okay, he uses race. So I'm just going to read where he says race, all right? So he says, by pluralistic, mm -hmm. we mean where ethnic groups own meaningful properties in the... Uh, me me uh, sorry, meaningful properties in the economy or where the economy is perceived and utilized as a public trust for the benefit of all the people instead of as the property of a particular race, social class, or a small group of races, ethnic groups, or classes. A more complete economic agreement of the African-American community with... With... That type of economy doesn't exist. Hold on a second. A more complete economic <laughs> agreement of the African-American community, community with white... And other ethnic communities is one which involves so there's no exploitation not, and economic terrorism. That's which involves not only the, the making the available of the rights of Negro people of the Right, world you're cutting off system. you're cutting off the right uh, reading. That's not even confusing. You're cutting off like, the reading. A, you're cutting off the reading. But again, let, again, let us just finish this paragraph. Through. Let us just finish the paragraph. You say sure, a more right, complete right, economic sure. agreement of the African American community with white and other ethnic uh, communities is one which involves uh not only they're making available to African American, uh, not only they're making available to African American business loans, loans, equity funds, and the like, but funds which would permit which would permit African American businesses and the community to own substantial equity in established and developing mainstream businesses. Yeah, seize the means of production. Oh. I totally agree with that. You're making. I totally agree with that. So look, totally when he says, "Look, You're hold as on, a Jim Crow economic everybody, 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 like everybody, everybody has to understand this, okay? Everybody sure. to understand this. Look, when he says a more complete economic agreement of the African community with white and other ethnic communities, that means that he's trying to go into an economic agreement with whites, correct? That yes. That means in the tradition of the. Definitely in America, the rights of the Negro people of the world, he's no. saying that economic terrorism is wrong. Again, he's trying to go into economic agreement with whites, correct? In the tradition, not of revolutionary. The of the rights of the it's Negro not people of the world. revolutionary. One. In the Two. tradition of the Declaration of the Rights of the Negro People of the World. Okay, but it's not revolutionary. Because in this context, a in this it context, is. it's not revolutionary. revolutionary. Two. 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 You want to remove the context? It's not working. People. People. The context, it's not desperate. It's not People could see it's that he's definitely he, desperate because every how is this time revolutionary? I describe the system Bruh. that he says that he's a part of. You're like, no, nope, that context doesn't matter. Take I, away that because context. Because you're just you, no you're just you're just allowed. cutting off the reading. You're repeating like like one of the things you're not supposed to do is repeat the same point over and over again. Uh, instead I, of allowing I have to it the other you person. Keep doing it. You would have to stop decontextualizing the text. It's not. It's not decontextualized. You said to read page it 620. Really is. You, you said to read page 620. To use the system that he says. But he, he doesn't even with, cite the declaration. Where does he cite the declaration? Where does he? Where does he cite Marcus Garvey? No, Marcus Garvey's declaration. Where does he say? Where you're you're yeah, reading an Garvey extra passage. You're reading a passage. You're reading. Wait, wait. Okay. So you want you want this book to be three thousand pages instead of how many it is now? It could have been. It it it, it, it would have made it. Would it probably would have made it. it um, yeah, I probably would have preferred it. So I couldn't have. Uh, so I wouldn't have any sort of uh, sentiment regarding that. But again, because you wanna you wanna add a phrase that's not there, right? But if we're looking I'm at it, the context that you're removing. I'm removing the context by just reading the book. You will not accept the fact that he's a Garvey. So I right, I'm reading the book. And you're saying that I'm decontextualizing Do the book. Do you accept the fact that he's a Garvia as he states in the text? I say everybody's a, everybody's a Garviaite in some sense. 
You know what I mean? So you're saying that there are Garveyites who are non-revolutionary? Uh, there are Garveyites that are non-revolutionary. If you're focusing on America, absolutely. If you're, if you're, if what he just read, this economic democracy thing that he just read, is not revolutionary at all. Because so what is, okay, so okay, okay, okay. I, look, what just, is the African wonder production? Look, hold on a second. Look again. You're 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 going to whole other. You're you're going to you're just I'm literally every every time mm -hmm. every time you take that away, I have to go there because you have to go it's where? like if I can't like like if you, if you can because with any book you can do this. No. Take the context out. It means it's not nothing. the context. This the is the book itself. Is gone. This is this totally is the box gone. you had us read. You had us read Literally, this box, and you're saying, you're saying, you're okay, saying okay, on, that on, if you okay. go well, outside of this book let and say, no, let, let me say this, let me say Can this, I steal man your point? no, I don't know what that means, but look, what I'm saying is this. Make your point stronger. I want to argue against the strongest representation of your point. All right, go for it, whatever you want to say. Go okay, on. so, if in this this passage, uh, Amos Wilson is an assimilationist, exactly. he's an integrationalist, right. and he's calling for economic democracy uh -huh. with other races of with people. With white people, yes. With white people, okay, Absolutely. that is your point. With the American white situation that, going on. Mm -hmm. with the, exactly. Now what? Okay, so would you also say that Garvey, in the same instance, when he's talking about copying Britain, copying Voltaire, copying Lenin, to build a democracy, that he is also calling for the same thing? That he's calling for the same thing? By mentioning only white people in that example and in that passage to the UNIA at the convention in New York, is he saying the same thing that Amos Wilson saying by only mentioning white people? By only mentioning? He's not talking about working with white people, though. It's a totally different sentiment. He's not talking about... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's not talking about working with white people when he talks about freedom and democracy and no, liberty? No, no. he's not oh, saying that at all. okay, so, so it's a... So, so, again, so it's a different context. So you can add context to Garvey, but not to Amos Wilson. What are you... That, that, that doesn't even make any sense, what you're saying. Again, you're... Because he you're, literally only cited white people. What Garvey about it? literally, in America... In America, talking about freedom, you're liberty, you're democracy, again, founder, it's, Jesus it's Christ, straw man. only said the white people. Straw man. Straw man. It has nothing to do mm -hmm. with anything. First off, Garvey... Well, I mean, it's the same as pluralism. Or it's the same as your context of pluralism that you think, right? Look, again, we look, people can read this one This one paragraph tells... No, not even a whole paragraph. These, these what is it, like two... One sentence, matter of fact tells you everything you need this this is exactly what an assimilationist integrationist would say no but, but no but can you can you please answer the question as i, I steel man your argument no you can didn't you, steal man your you, argument you're, you're talking about whether if, if he says that he wants freedom in africa whether that means that he's uh no, 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 like what no, is that even i'm asking that's not what i asked i'm asking with his usage of the example of primarily white men he's using liberty, white yeah. people because uh, he's talking to a crowd of African Americans. But again, but again, but again, he says liberty, freedom, democracy, yeah. Eurasian okay. concepts. He's using a Eurasian. How model, is liberty, so not freedom? How is liberty, freedom, and and democracy? Well, democracy, yeah. But how are these? Uh, uh, what would you call them? Uh, because he's. Uh, how are these? How are these? How are they, like? I don't understand. He's in a. He's in the middle of America. What do you expect him to say? Exactly. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> no, but but I mean, but the, but that has nothing to do with him. But with with Amos Wilson saying that he wants Amos to Wilson's have equity. He wants to have. He wants to have. He said he wants to have equity in Wazungu's businesses. Equity ownership. Yeah. Yeah, because African people, African the African world is wherever African people are. Garvey did not, not say all black people should go to Africa. That's not. Garvey did not say that all black people should go to Africa. Be that as it may, if I if Martin Luther King Jr. said he wanted equity in uh in uh in, in African American businesses, I mean sorry in in, in, in mainstream businesses, uh NWCP. If we are working for these companies, we should have ownership in the companies that we work well for. That's all well and good, but that's not revolu That's not a revolutionary stance. That's the point. It Look, literally is. That is a it never. It literally is. What's, okay, okay, and Kobe that is a, nothing, that means absolutely nothing. That is a nothing. never... And Kobe means absolutely nothing, right? Why do you say that? What, what is and what that? And what does that do with anything? What does that do with anything? But the point being that... Because that's literally... 
How do you build a vanguard? How do you build a vanguard? You're How saying you you're How saying that revolution? if we have more ownership in Bank of America, that's revolutionary. If we own the companies and institutions, he didn't that say we own for, it. He's saying have pluralistic seizing space in the places. He said places you're not for. taking the whole Bank of America. You're taking a percentage based off of your population. It's affirmative action. You're taking a percentage based upon the amount that you worked. Affirmative action. Democracy. Affirmative action. This is not. That's not revolutionary. And again, and, and again. It's not revolutionary. Because every it's not. single, All right. every single economic policy point, and this is your strategy. You just totally decontextualize. That's the not decontextualized totally, or a strategy. This totally, is exactly yes, what you, you cited. Because because every time, every time I piece it together with you're the not ideology piecing it together, that you're making it up. Self, the author himself. By your reasoning, himself. look. By your reasoning, because even 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 uh, Dr. King cites uh, uh, Marcus Garvey and, and celebrates his life, right? But by your reasoning, mm -hmm. as long as somebody says that they are uh, a Garveyite, they can promote integration, they can promote uh, <laughs> they can promote assimilation, they can promote gaining Tremendous equity in capitalist. Uh, in a capitalist economy. And he's not a capitalist. Economic democracy is not capitalism. They literally fight. They Economic literally fight. democracy involves the coming together of community institutions, organizations, individuals in order to purchase influential equity. That's what Mark, that's what Amos Wilson said. Okay, so 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 you you're the type of person he's, who thinks that new economic policy that's totally capitalism. You think Black Star Line, that's totally capitalism, even though they have separate notes. But ignore that. That's Do like, you think that those things are capitalism? We are going by what... We're going by blueprint for black power. What you're doing is what's even, called straw man. If it's capitalist, why didn't he just say it? Why didn't he just use it? All right, let's let's. All right, again, you have another again, example. Again, hold on a second. Even, no, hold on, hold on. Even if he, hold on a second. Let's see if he, let's see if he, let's see what he says about capitalism. Let's see if he has anything to literally, say about capitalism. Literally, he literally promotes state capitalism. So black if he promotes state capitalism, if he promotes that state these black capitalism, institutions can be quasi governmental organizations. If he promotes so economic democracy, if he promotes state capitalism, he literally outlines a similar pathway as Lenin. If he promotes, how can, they, how can you say that that's not revolutionary? Saying that you want to gain equity in that's not because the revolution. Same what Lenin time, does. Because, what again, right? Again, look, again, if you're talking again, about again, Lenin, again, what Lenin does is he mm -hmm. removes the uh, ruling class from power. That's what revolution is. You remove the ruling class from power. Okay. If you're begging and that's the, what this, and that's if what this text implies. you are begging the ruling class for a piece for a bigger crumb. Right. Pressuring and begging are two different, two completely different things, and you know it. No, it's not. But anyway. But, but pressuring and begging are two completely different things. Pressuring with what? That's the question. With your own leverage based upon your leverage of what? communalist international organizations. International. This book is an internationalist text. Internationalist. And 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 what and what? And look look look. That's the trouble with the, this is the trouble with these uh, quote unquote American literature, right? Is that it's. It's, it's actually, I think, I think the term is, not can finally use the term, it's wolf tickets, right? It's wolf tickets in the sense of... This is a wolf ticket. It's oh, all bark, no bite. Okay? When, there's bite in what, every single chapter. There is no chapter of this bite. bite. It's all bark. Because, and again, because, and again, because it's never and revolutionary, again. and people who read this do not, cannot yeah, do anything. Is, okay, you think the auxiliaries in the UNIA were capitalists, don't you? The auxiliaries, and the, I mean, you'd have to be more, you'd have to be more specific. But again, you think, you think, you're talking you the about, Black Cross nurses, you're talking the about a completely different individual. You're talking about, I'm talking, uh, Marcus Garvey organized the largest uh, organization of African Americans, uh, sorry, but African people uh, uh, on the globe, right? Uh, for uh, what was it? Uh, you know, like like System of Alpha, right? But it's non-governmental. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marcus Garvey has that. Wait, to his what's, name. wait, what? Oh, well, what's not mentioned? Wait, what? Are you, are you saying are you saying that the UNIA is not mentioned in, in this book? No, I, I didn't say anything about mentioned. I said I said I said when you're talking about Marcus Garvey, you're talking about the uh, one of the largest organizers, uh, non-governmental organizers of African people 
on the planet. Yeah. When you're talking about Amos Wilson, you're talking about a guy who speaks to crowds almost the size of Minecraft. You know what I mean? It's like, like you're talking like, about it's not even apples and oranges. Is literally the most referenced psychologist in the Journal of Pan African Studies. You're talking about a guy. The who Journal of Pan African Studies. Some of the top African philosophers on the continent, and even former Chairman Africana herself. You okay. can't act as if he has no influence. That would be he super could, delusional. He could have influence on a handful more of individuals. In any, who has more influence in the past 50 years? In the past 50 years, Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I just named and the, named the state a leaders. contemporary who worked they, with those guys. Uh, and, and they had he a lot Joseph more... Williams literally worked with them. They had a lot more influence. They Kwame were Nkrumah... Kings and he was a psychologist. Who 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 broke down IQ? Who broke down black on black crime? Who broke down black poverty? Poorly. Who broke down poorly. Poorly. Who poorly. Who was poorly. Doing that in the poorly. In the poorly. Who? Poorly. 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 Everything that he poorly? did. Yes, compared to Marcus poorly? Garvey. Compared to Marcus Garvey, absolutely. Absolutely. Garvey Garvey never even spoke about IQ. IQ? Garvey never spoke about I, black on look. black crime like that. Like not to the level of Amos Wilson. Garvey never spoke about environmental racism to the meticulous degree that Amos Wilson did. Look, if you're talking like and those things, those things are like chomp change. Those things are chomp change. Okay. How is that chomp change? Well, look, that's the main that's, source of it's academic chomp change. terrorism, institutional terrorism, it's chomp justifying racism. Change. If I were to look for change in my pocket, that's what I would pull out. But again, are you serious? but we're talking about blueprint for black power. If you want to talk about Amos Wilson, like I said, I'm not really because, into not, that. And again, I, I agree to this because I told you if you use his entire body of work, then your argument completely falls apart. I, like it's not, it's the, not that it would fall apart. Argument. I'm not I'm not necessarily going to be saying that I'm familiar with. I can't necessarily speak for something that I don't actually I'm not actually interested in. Or I'm not impressed by. You know? But do you see why it's so easy for you to decontextualize him from Garveyism if you've never read his other books about Garveyism? Well, you've the discussion is on blueprint for black power. If see what, um, what 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 we're doing now is we're going by hearsay. We're going by no evidence. This we're is going literally by, published. What is published? This is published. Yeah, but I can't tell you if you tell me, hey, black on black, because I know that's one of his books. I can't tell you that it's a good book because I never read it. I don't think it's a good book. I Duh, doubt it's a good like, book. Obviously, obviously you're not informed on that particular issue. On um, black on black crime, I've heard him no, speak on, on it. His, I've on heard him speak on elucidation it. elucidation of what that is and how to I've, talk about it academically. I've heard it speak. I heard him speak on it. It the way how they I got think, it from him. Every I, modern person. Every modern writer, scholar, and yeah, but that's who's all fighting on the yes, IQ issue, yes, who's fighting on the black yes. on black crime issue, got it from Amos every Wilson. black one or you every know it, every. I know it, hold on a second, it. every black one or everyone? That's the question. Every single person who is using the method to debunk and refute that talking point got it from Amos Wilson. I wouldn't. Nobody I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Anywhere can deny that. I wouldn't bet money on that. All right, but who? Um, can, who, who? Who was talking about who was talking about that in the seventies? Who 70s? was debunking black IQ? Uh disparity? Who was talking about this? Who was talking about uh, it as early as he was talking? About that, black that IQs? I don't think Amos uh, Wilson was doing about, this in the 70s. About the whole gambit of issues that he tackles. Oh, I don't think talking you're talking about the seventies. I don't I don't think that's what he was doing. He was a psychiatrist at the point. You know? He was literally within the African centered movement. He, he was a psychiatrist. And he, that's, how, that's where he started. I think that was in the 50s. No, he went to the new weeks. school afterward and got his PhD after that. I think he was a psychiatrist before that. And as far as, I understand, because, but, but as, far as I understand, he was just a psychiatrist. This, this is his... Uh, went thing, around speaking... And, 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 hold on, I'm trying, I'm trying not to get frustrated. But it's like, you haven't read his other texts. So when reading this one... It's, like, when yeah. I'm literally over and over and over and over and over trying to describe where you got it from, and you decontextualize it over and over and over, and I'm like... You're not it's, describing it's like you're not it. You're, you're at all. Yes. You're not familiar at all with his writing style, with his research I style. I listen to him. I only That's hear him. Enough. Reading is better. I know reading is better, but I've, I've tried to read through his work, and I'm just like, this is all ridiculous. This is the same person. <laughs> this is the <laughs> same <laughs> person... <laughs> Who said, who said, and I quote, that 
Elijah Muhammad is the greatest African American psychologist of all time. No, sorry, the greatest psycho uh, African psychologist of all time. It doesn't even make any from sense. What he did? From, 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 from the what perspective and context, he of what wasn't he did. even a psychologist, though. The guy wasn't well, even a psychologist. Well, well, again and again. I mean, again, you know what I mean? Like, I do not agree with universalism. I'm not a universalist. I don't that, know what that, that means. Issues. You're just using words. But look. Uh, oh, I can, can, you, can you allow me to explain? Look, the point. No, look, look. The point being that I I hear what he's saying. A lot of it is just repeating. Uh, uh, a white folk. Garvey. White. Folk. Garvey. No. Garvey's no, position. No, I picked up one of his books. I tried to read through it, and he's telling us about that uh, that mouse experiment, and how this is how you could really look at the mouse experiment, and it's just like that's the dumbest thing and I've heard in my life. I also understand that what, you know what, I mean? what, what is it? Forty years after this was published, or, or whatever. No, he like didn't. Decades after this. What? What about it? But I'm saying that that's just repeating so, a white so we, study. Again, like, I, I don't see him doing his own right. studies. I don't see him doing his own studies. I don't see any of that stuff. It's just repeating white because studies you're not with and white research. So he does his own studies. What what one of the studies he did? Well, he's not alive anymore. What so when he, when he was alive, he did his own studies. So the the um, council plan, the council plan is that Let's not based upon a system study? Let's see, council plan, and what is that? Amos Wilson? It, it's in his, it's in his text. Hold on. It's in his like text. The, it's like not it's not plan, published his online. Plan for, it's it's just huh? in his text. It's not published online. It's in his text. Is that what you're saying? It's, it's it's here in the it's here in Blueprint for Black Power. All right, what what page? The council plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find the exact page. Oh, this guy, yo. I wish I, I wish I had the bookmark. But didn't you read the book? Yeah, I read the you book. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Look at the bibliography. The chart. Look the, at the, the bibliography. Council plan. Council plan. Let me plan. see. Let me let me go back and, and try to get. So the I'm in the index. Page. And the again, index. I, and I didn't even mention I didn't even mention the the uh, portions of the book where he talks about like he literally talks about the African murder production. He uses the Bamala cage on Glee as an example on 735, which is a huge point that pretty much debunks everything you just said. Oh, who is that? All right, all right. Give, give me give me the page. Give me the page. Give me the page. 735. That's the page. 735. Um, that's not the council page, but that's the. Um, 735. Tribesman. Okay, 735. Lee, specifically. Okay, 735. He says, uh, the, they cite Cameroon. Okay. Uh, any any particular paragraph? Uh, what about this? Um, I don't understand. He just, he's just talking about the John Wee. He's talking about the African murder production and the pre colonial economy that he's, existed. Wait, is this the one oh, about. Oh. This is about Susus. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, Rotating it's, it's credit of associations. That's all. Uh, that's that's what they call it, but we have our own. No, that's what that's what Amos Wilson calls it. Amos Wilson says ro rotating credit association. That's what they're commonly known within the Anglo American. That's context. what Amos Wilson says. Rotating credit associations, the prime importance of saving. That is how they are commonly. Five. He's not going to use Jungwe because people don't speak Madumba. All people right. Don't speak people all don't right. Speak I'm just saying he's instead, not instead use of the African term, instead obviously. of acting like it's somebody else saying it or like it's me saying it. You know, let's acknowledge that that's what Amos Wilson said. So you're saying that because he mentioned this, uh, you said John Gwee. That's how it's called in the Anglo-American context. Because he I mentioned mean, this, I mean, I don't, I don't what is this? What, what is this supposed to mean? What is this supposed to mean, though? I don't understand. What about this? What okay, about so it? If you know, again, 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 and you would have to read Civilization or Barbarism, and you'd have to read Zeus what about what about this though? What about this makes because it? Because he's talking about the John Gwee. He's talking about. The so he talks about it. What about it? It's the African motor production. It's anti-capitalist. It's anti-American. It's anti-imperialist. This is a uh, example that's still the, 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 right the, the, now. the thing with He's what you're saying is this. It's so is ridiculous. What right you're now, saying is so ridiculous. Look, look, what I you're. Don't know why you're getting so uncomfortable? What you're this. saying really it doesn't why. make any sense because here is you said 735, right? Here's the context. The context. For what you're talking about. He says, an illustrative example of how an African-based rotating credit association can advance the economic growth and development of an African people is provided by citations from a New York Times article, November 30, 1987, titled, Informal Capitalism Grows in Cameroon. 
The John Hui is not capitalist. The UPC, they call it Marxist. The UPC was not Marxist. Using European terms does not change an African reality. I am telling this you from, this that is from my he is not family. even quoting it. This Look. is an institution that I am extremely familiar with. Okay. And there is no way that I will allow you to call it what it is not. Look, because bro. Because I know this and I've read it my whole life. Did I call it? Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. If I'm reading. If I'm reading something. If I am reading, if I'm reading Amos Wilson, if I'm reading, bro, bro, you're getting way too sensitive. You're talking to somebody from that you're culture reading, and it's not going to happen. You, it's just not going to happen. Hold on a second, dude. The you're getting way too sensitive. You're getting way too sensitive. Okay? I'm but not, I'm just saying you're, you're getting, not going to classify by something that it's not. How you're am not. I? So if I'm, reading, if I'm reading what Amos Wilson wrote, how, what makes you think that that's what I'm saying? You're speaking to somebody from the culture that Hold he's talking second. about. I have I am reading I he am reading I am AMP. reading he's what talking about the AMP. I am from the culture Bro, that he is speaking You about. are getting way too sensitive and you're misdirecting I am from the culture you that are mis that has nothing to do with anything I can give you more So you want me to So you're telling me you're telling me that I shouldn't read what Amos Wilson said I'm telling you to read what he says and then speak so to So I just read it. I just read You are you're, speaking to someone from you're the way culture too sensitive, that he's describing. You're way too here. sensitive. You're, you're way too sensitive. You are speaking to somebody that can give you more information as an ethnic native. What does that have to do with the book? What does that have to do with the book in question? Because he is describing something. He is not describing it. New York Times is. Totally, New York Times. Totally your point. Dude. New York Times is describing it. There's no description here from Amos Wilson. He's giving a reference to the New York Times. He's so then how is he describing it? He doesn't know the media outlets in the country because he's in America. How, how is he How is he describing it by quoting New York Times? Totally unrealistic. How is he describing it? Does not negate the point. How is he describing you can you can ask somebody from the culture, bro. And you, can you, ask are, me you are what it means, you are. You're telling me. me you're telling me. Look, and look. And you can ask me because liquidity, challenging the liquidity of the official banking system within Cameroon, challenging the liquidity using the indigenous infrastructure, bro. Of the Jangui. Bro, bro, you're really like you're just not even here. Again. I'm All I did. You, you don't want to talk to someone from the culture. Who that said I don't want to talk to the You're person? You're hung up on New York Times. New York Times. No. Speak to me. Don't be afraid. I'm from the culture. Affirmat. I can describe this. Affirmat. Very, very clearly. Affirmat. Why are you so Affirmat. afraid to talk to somebody from the culture that needs to Where do you? Where do you? How do you get the impression that I'm afraid to talk to somebody from the society? Where do you because get that impression? You don't even want somebody from the culture that he's describing to elucidate on that economy and what it really is. Hold on a second. You don't want me to do that. But after what, what did I do? There. What Come did on. I do? What did I do to make you in, to indicate that? Because I'm describing it to you. No, no, no. Time, Hold times, on a second. And I'm saying, all I that did. Is not what it is. All I That's did. Look, what look. What you're taking issue with is that I read what Amos Wilson wrote. That's all that you're taking issue with. You read the reference that he gave. No, no, no. I didn't, read, I didn't even do that. I only I read... the culture that he's talking about. Again, all many I... Many different people. Look, uh, many people, different people have tried to describe it different ways. Many different people. I am from Africa, the culture. You're not saying anything. Again, so again. Wilson, you're just being sensitive. Afromac. So Afromac. You're just so being sensitive. The you're just being sensitive. All I read was this. I'm going to read it again. You're so afraid. I'm, I'm not the one running away from the context. I'm not all, away. all I did was I'm read this. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it again. I said an illustrative example of how an African-based rotating credit association can advance the economic growth and development of an African people is provided by citations from a New York Times article, November 30, 1987, titled "Informal Capitalism Grows in Cameroon." And a white man is going to accurately that's describe all, something black. That's sure, all I read. You see, you're taking an black. issue. A reference he used you're from taking an, an issue. That's not his position. He's again, not even a capitalist in the again, sense. He's again, a again. Why are you so afraid of the context? Wait, hold on a second. So, again, what are you replying to? 
I am what did I say? Running away from the context. What did I I'm say? I'm trying to explain to you because you're using a white description of a black phenomenon. Am That's I? Very, very how am I doing that? How am I doing that? Okay, so but, but who? How am I doing that? You were, because you're saying, oh, you're saying, oh, look, he cited a New York Times article that called it informal uh, capitalism. How am I I'm doing anything by reading? How am I doing he anything of the of the sense by reading the sentence? All I did was read You're the sentence. Implying something that I did not imply anything. Facetious. I just it read the sentence. Hold, 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 Hold on a second. 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 What did I do, Afrimac? You are literally. What did I do? What did I no? All I did was read a sentence. Not allowing me to apply the proper context and apply proper textual analysis. And I did that by reading a sentence. And I did that by reading a huh. sentence. I'm not allowing you to do something by reading a sentence. That's what you're saying? Because you're you're literally using that one citation. I just used the sentence. Something that, that's totally false. What did totally I imply that's totally false. false? Because you're using the citation that describes the John Guia. I am using that? I am I did that. Did I do that or did Amos Wilson do that? that hold on a second. Hold on hold on a second. Did I do that or did Amos Wilson do that? You read it and made a false implication. I'm responding. To I that. read again, what Amos Wilson wrote. Because if Amos okay. Wilson this, so if Amos Wilson writes, it's titled. Amos Wilson says the New York Times article is titled "Informal Capitalism Grows in Cameroon." You will not miscategorize that based upon a citation of a white description of a black phenomenon. But who cited this white either. description of a black phenomenon? He cited it because that was the only resource that he so had. So why are you saying it's me? This. Why are you saying, did I write Blueprint for Black Who wrote Blueprint for Black Power? Did I? How did, is he going to know about a pre-colonial economic institution? Let me, let, me let me ask you an honest question. Let me ask you an honest question. Let me ask you, let me ask you an honest question. Okay? Did sure. I or Amos Wilson write Blueprint for Black Power? You are making a false. Did I? I'm just asking you an honest question. Your honest question between the you and hyper focus that you have this is what I'm talking on about. that particular citation is dubious at best, sinister at worst. But where? All right. The so where? Where does? Where does? You have a hyper focus. You say. That you want hold on a second. Block me. No. You're trying to block me from applying the concept. I'm not even. Look, I'm looking for where Amos Wilson refers to this economic system. Where in he's, this text he literally, does he refer to it? Oh, oh my gosh, okay. Where? First of all, first of all, he, he says Tontine. Do you, do you see Tontine? Okay, no, yeah, I see. Wait, where does he say it? Where does he say it? Where does he say it? What page? <sighs> Let's look at, look at grassroots credit system. Tontine. No, right? no, no, know, no, no. what a Tontine is? Hold on a second. Where does, yeah, where does Amos Wilson say it? Because that's, that's the New York Times article. So I'm asking you, where does Amos Wilson say it? Where does he cite the New York Times article? No, no, no. Where does Amos Wilson talk about this econ economic system? Because you're showing me where the Throughout New York Times... Throughout the entire chapter. All right. Where does he say Tontine? Show it. Where does Amos Wilson say Tontine? Um, Not where the New York Times says Tontine. Where does Amos Wilson say Tontine? Um, and, and, and again... Where? Again, hold on. Where? Hold on, hold on. Where? Because I don't, I don't know. Where? I don't know the exact reference. To exactly. Can I, can you you saying that Amos Wilson? No, no, no. Hold on a second. You said Amos talk. Wilson. But you're not letting me talk. Okay. Bruh. Can, can I, can I please, can See I please talk about this? Go on. All right. Tontine is a French word. Right. So, just because even if he doesn't say Tontine, and I don't know if he does or he doesn't, he doesn't. Check. But even, if, okay, okay. Let's say he does it. Steel man. Let me steel man. Okay. Let's say he does it. Okay. Let's say he does it. All right. That doesn't negate the <laughs> validity or the essence of the economic system that he is describing. Because, oh, because, God. Tontine, I'm giving you context and you hate the context. I'm not, you yeah, I'm not hating hate the context. context. You're you making false analysis. allegations. You hate. You You're making false allegations. Analysis. Again, stay on point. Stay on route. Stay on point. It's, this is ad hominem. Stay mm -hmm. on point. Stay on point. The, 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 the point is that you're saying that Amos Wilson is citing, uh, is referencing the economic system in Cameroon, correct? That's, that's, that's your allegation, the, correct? A, a pre, that, a that pre colonial. You're saying that Amos Wilson discusses. System that you're saying that Amos Wilson discusses it, feudalism. correct? You're saying Amos Wilson discusses it, right? 
Where does he discuss it? I'm saying Amos Where Wilson does Amos Wilson a discuss it? That the official capitalist banking system of Cameroon describes as the enemy. Okay, but what I'm asking you is this: Where does Amos Wilson uh, uh, express any of the stuff that you're talking about? Because Where all does he, he does, all he does, no, all he does is cite Where the New York Times article. The economic yes. Institution? yes, independently of the New York Throughout Times article. Chapter. Give an example of where he, he does that. Okay. Um, it is interesting to note that the legitimacy and value of oh. rotating credit associations, blah, 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 blah. Do you see that part? Yeah, yeah, page 738. Okay, go on. Same system. Same system. Right or the SUSU. System. You're talking about the SUSU. Okay, that's and then that's the and then he is. and then he quotes the and, and he doesn't explain it himself. Instead, he quotes New York Newsday. So, so your because impression? That's where he got the reference from. Exactly. So he so 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 an author cannot cite their sources. But where is he speaking independently on it? Okay, where is he connected to that what, independently? What do, you mean, what, do you, what do you mean by independently without citing sources? Again, look, look. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that you that that that, that you're. You're 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 neglecting to share with the audience. Okay, this is what you're neglecting to share. That's a chapter called uh, rotating credit associations. Correct. So you're saying because yeah. he mentioned rotating credit associations, that that makes the whole book revolutionary in a sense. Correct. But he's describing. But what chapter was that actually? Describing an institution I don't know what that. Was. that what page banking institutions classify as the enemy. Okay, but then he That's also sure, he yes. also guess what he also describes the banking institution as a, as an intermediary the same way he describes he also describes like he says the black owned banks he describes market. the investment club he describes the it's crisis of leadership he describes the, the white owned line? blacks. He describes the black church. He describes he's describing all well, of these things. The UNIA. The UNIA had a church too. He's That's describing all of these things. That's again, like I said, the shotgun method. He's just going through How, the different Oh my literally so okay. Every every example that I give, you're gonna say shotgun method. I give you the context. I show you the fact that that's literally the auxiliary method that Garvey used to formulate the UNIA in 1914. Okay. You ignore it. But, I say that that's literally but you're talking about the, the UNIA. You're talking about the democracy. UNIA in America, right? Say that one more time. Well, look, it, it depends on it depends on what you're referencing. Doing business, in and of itself, isn't necessarily revolutionary. Doing a susu, but it's also in and of not itself, revolutionary. Or not, not revolutionary. It's not revolutionary. Because yeah, all revolution. revolutions have commerce within them. Yes, but that would be... Revolution is, again, you have to focus on uh, overtaking the opposition. Uh, so if, if like, nowhere in this mm, book... I don't, I, don't, I don't oppose that. Exactly, but the, nowhere in this book do you see anything close Everywhere to that. Everywhere in the book. African identity cannot coexist with white identity. He just said... He just said that he's just trying to get equity in mainstream white businesses. He said that we uh, should own where we work. No, but... Ugh. We should own where we live. No, we should own Common an sense. equity. We can own a share That's of McDonald's. Own a share. A share of McDonald's. That's it. Fair treatment and not economic A share of McDonald's is not revolution. Did, did, did Come on. Constitution Do you have another example? Rights? Did it not talk about economic rights? All right. But, but what page? What page? What page are we talking about? In the declarations of the rights of the Negro people what in the page? world. What page? What page? Because you, you're 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 bringing up every time you every time you go to Garvey, it's just a it's just a it's just a it's just a miss. It's just a miss. Every time you go to Garvey, every time. This last time you okay. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying that he did not? Are you saying that he did not? Let's see. Let's see what Garvey said, and let's see what you said. I mean, let's see what Emmett Wilson. I'm, bring, I'm bringing it up right now. I'm you know, bringing it up this right guy, now. Declaration of what? The Rights of Man? Is that and, what it's and, called? And while you're at it, um, the, um, is it the Rights of Man? Or while I'm while I'm looking at it, you can look at um 502 to 510 in this book, and then tell me what you think about that. 502 to 510. Yeah, maybe, in 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 what? Yeah, 502 to 510 around that uh, chapter. 502 to 510. Of yeah. what? Of of. Like what what like in terms of oh terms nation of within a nation of a, of a nation oh. within a nation. Okay. Um, and then, because I know you disagree with that, so. Yeah, that's nonsense. 
Uh, yeah, so, so, so you can explain to the audience why in that passage that you just think it's trash, why you, why you think that you disagree with it. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's, do this, let's do this declaration of, what is it called? I can't remember the... Okay. The, the, the Declarations United. of the Rights of the Negro People of the World. Oh, Negro People, gotcha. Uh, Why so, that? I mean, if you just read through it... No, no, give, um, give, give, the, give, the, give the article, because you're just okay, making I, up stuff. Can, can, I, can I post it into the chat or whatever so people can have it? Uh, they're probably not on, they're probably on YouTube. So, well, because it's on, it's on my like, it's on the site called right, History on. Matters. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm up there. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a post, I'm gonna share this screen with the people. It's on like History Matters. Yeah, I got it. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I got it. So, <laughs> what is the, what, what, what number are we looking at? Um, I'm reading through it. Okay. So, uh, eight is an economic law. Eight. Number eight. Um, in the civil service and department it's, offices, it's, we are it's, everywhere it's, discriminated it's, against. It's um, it's it's in different sections. It's in different sections. Sorry, I gotta find that. So where he talks about um, we declare taxation without representation, oh, unjust and tyrannous, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. That's okay. an example of of an economic right. Okay. Um, that that's that that's in that's and actually trial the... by jury, trial, trial by jury, oh. not necessarily well, political economy, but it's speaking about you know not allowing legal terrorism to inflict black people. Okay. Um, number 10, the, that our people in those parts are forced to work for lower wages than the average standard of a white man and are kept in conditions repugnant to good civilized taste and customs. It looks like they're... the same position. Exact okay. Exact same position. That our people are forced to... Okay, no. what about it? Seven, we are discriminated against and denied an equal chance to earn wages for the support of our families and in many instances are refused admission into labor unions and nearly everywhere are paid right, smaller so wages and I... other economic... I think I see the problem here, but keep going. What's the What's the problem? Uh, this some of these not everything here would be revolutionary. This is actually just normal. Do you, but, uh, this is actually just normal. <laughs> positive and positive versus negative liberty. Do you Do you agree that this this text, this constitution, Look, contains positive, neutral, and negative liberties? Well, what I'll say is this: If I'm on a plantation, correct? Let's say, right, let's say if I'm sure. in a prison. Let's say if I'm in a prison, in fact, right? I'm in a prison, and I say I would like for the guards to treat us better, right? That's not revolutionary. You, you understand? You have to understand that. No, I'm okay, saying that in, if you, if you, if so you. For, so for Garvey to make a constitution, mm -hmm. he can't say that we do not accept mistreatment in that constitution. No, I'm saying, but that would not necessarily make it. Make it. That's not necessarily what would make but it revolutionary. But it is a revolutionary text. It's the first constitution you, 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 to define Yeah, you're, you're using revolution. You're using revolution, like, I would say incorrectly. Okay? In Why the is that using it? He because, again, describing an opposition. You're not and overcoming that opposition no. through communalist activity. But you have to overcome the uh, opposition. You know, the, to say that you want black people to have rights is not in and of itself. Uh, but a revolutionary, do you understand the like notion rights, of negative liberty? Do you understand? Again, that you're just you're just using you know terms that you. That, that is a political science term. Okay, yeah, I I this did. This is a constitution. I did astrophysics, so I don't necessarily know every political science term. That what he's saying is a position you know? within constitutions all over the world describing what a power force yes. or like the state or a different entity cannot do. That would be a negative liberty. A negative liberty. And that's what he's describing here. Yeah, but that... That, that is not out of step that, with any again, constitution anywhere. Again, the other part is it outlines a future without that opposition. If you're asking for rights, that in and of itself is not a revolutionary. But, but that's not a, that are, is, you, that's, are you literally... Are you literally going to take away the teleological or the objective of this constitution in the UNIA? Are you literally going to just take that away? Am I going to take? A, no, I'm saying that there's a difference between revolution and uh, and and like reform. Like those. those so reforms. you're saying this constitution is not revolutionary. The parts that you are highlighting are reforms. Yes. It's so, like it's, yeah, it's it's just reformist. Uh, but, but it's like, but it's all like, right, like, 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 I'll give you this way. I'll give you this way. I'll give you this way. I'll give you this way because this is important for you know Saturday when I have this uh, <laughs> you know this 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 this, this question of. Uh, of uh, what you call it, of 
of, of let's say we're, we, we intend to make a revolutionary pamphlet. And, and the idea is that w when we looked at Lenin, right, when we read Lenin, I read Lenin earlier, he was saying that the working class consciousness is not in and of itself revolutionary, but it would naturally uh, incline itself towards what is known as trade unionism, right? And trade unionism yeah. would be essentially more rights for the workers. So the more rights for the workers is not a revolutionary stance. Is not a revolutionary stance, and he would. You 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 can't isolate a process within a revolutionary system to classify no, again, that revolutionary again, system as counter-revolutionary. This, 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 this That's be, what this, you're doing. Like right I now. said, this is this is this is not me. This is Lenin. And so just the same. But you but what you're trying to do is isolate a process in Garvey. I understand the point that you're trying to make. No, no, but you're trying, trying to trying isolate to a, po a policy point to say that the entire system is non-revolutionary. No, I'm not saying that. I said that the the policy points that you read were not were reformist. That's what I said. Because you decided to leave. themselves in the vacuum, sure, but within the exactly. context well, of a system like but the that's the, absolutely not. That's the question that you asked. Because you were saying that because Mar Mar Amos Wilson was citing these he, passages, the same, that makes it revolutionary. That is his ideology. It's not. That is literally those his are ideology. Again, in the same sense that you know, like I said, you know, I like the Democrats. I think you like the Democrats in a sense. Let's say I that. do not mess with the Democrats. All right. I'm, I'm All right. not a friend of the DNC. Okay, let's say it this way though. The Democrats would represent reform in the American system and more rights no to black folk. No disagreement there? And more rights to black folk. So the stuff that you just no outlined... No disagreement there. The stuff that you just outlined about better wages for black folk, uh, Within more... Within the context of an entire system. Those stuff are in... Listen to me. Those stuff are in the DNC's platform. Yeah, just because an isolated point that you yeah, isolated exactly, but no, the point was that the point is, was that you is, purposely looked for those examples and said because, because I found those ideology that is literally he says it in the text. He could have been a Democrat. Democratism. Honestly, he could have been a Democrat. You know, like it sounds like he he could have been a liberal. You know, on did top of owned, on uh, top of. On top of oh, you allegedly, did he did he say that black people should 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 fight for the Democrats? And he the said we should have our own political party, which is another ridiculous sentiment that I don't think a grown, so the UNIA is ridiculous. I don't think an adult in America uh, should articulate. Uh, the UNIA is ridiculous. Uh, the UNIA is ridiculous. No, but that's again you're talking about the UNIA. Why are you talking about the UNIA? Oh, my bad. I'm because sorry. you said. Because you said his, his advocacy for a black political organization. Hold on a second. Ridiculous. Give me two seconds. A black no, a black political party. That's what it was. Uh, party organization. AARP is that a party or an organization? Uh, I mean, it, to conflate the it two. It depends on to, where. To, if you're talking about in Africa, it's uh, well, it's a political. The UNIA party. was not. Well, I mean, they didn't have offices, but the main for of operation was in the Caribbean and the North America. Okay, so what was the political party that uh, Garvey ran on? Uh, that Garvey had in, in America. UNIA. UNIA political party. Not all political parties are about giving votes. Okay, well, I'm talking about on the ballot. And they, and they did vote he for their was, own leaders too. They actually did vote for their own leaders he, in America he, to run the organization yes, in America. Again, the the sentiment that 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 I mean, look. You're talking about. I'm talking about on a presidential level. On a presidential level. Well, I mean that's. I mean, exactly. To, to, that to would make be that point is a yeah. little. Well, exactly. again, that's Garvey what I'm was Garvey was elected provincial president. No, I'm talking about what what Amos Wilson was talking about. When Amos Wilson was talking about political parties, he was talking Black about Black political party like the on a presidential Garvey level. Was elected president in America of Africa. Garvey was elected president in America in an organization. Yes, in that's America. not what Gar that's not. Never touched Africa. That's but not he ruled over Africa. That's not what Amos Wilson was talking about in his chapter. He was talking on about the Democrats black and the he, he, oh, he literally is a Garvey. Eye. Put the he page. Put the page. Because the, the thing is, this that you're you you. It seems like you're blinded by this this conception that he's a Garveyite. But when you look at the hard evidence, it's not I'm there. I'm using that as a context to analyze. But again, it's not there in the text. Yeah, it is. Uh, so basically, you're saying that in order to read Blueprint for Black Power, you would have to read the rest of his corpus and then and then make a judgment on Not it. necessarily. Not necessarily. But, but, but you're saying that it's inadequate. 
if you, if you are in the interest of isolating different instances and policy points, a I book, would highly recommend that you read his other books. If I'm reading a book, I expect that the book itself is uh, complete. And that I'm not expected to... Complete. Yeah, it is right. very complete. So if it's complete, so that, I mean, then yes, it's a devolutionary. Hold on a second. Let me see what the comments are. Let me just see what the comments are. N Power says, even if sure. Amen was about operating within the white man's system, that may be as far as we can negotiate. All we need to worry about is making Africa great again. If Amos Wilson mentions that one of the prime tasks is helping Africa to have the best system, never mind America. I hope that's what Amos meant, LOL, brother Nat. Uh, I guess it boils down to what do we need. So if you're critiquing Tail, the constructive you know, part, it's been, he makes it this you, you have, you have the Is there only Garvin Garvin or no one else? You just Garvin read Garvin. it. Okay. You know, it's been a while since I have. It's been about maybe a few months since I've like read through it. A few months? Okay, but yeah. I'm just going off the top. No, I just, I just look. I read this like eight years ago. I just read the last three chapters recently. Already forgot it because it's it's just like it's just subpar. If you're really a Pan African nationalist, it's subpar if you're really a Pan African nationalist. But well, I I think that I think that. To say that, that means you do not understand the historical development of Pan-African nationalism. I would say this is subpar to Garvey. Okay? That's what I would he say. He uses Garvey's methods, though. He, like, I, that's really, really, really delusional to he, say that. Because he's using he may them use them, but he doesn't them. use them as well. You know what I mean? Uh, Marcus Garvey's just... Who uses... Well, I mean, but, but I, it's, it's just like, who uses them better? Like, who, then has, Marcus Garvey, who has given... Huh? Then Marcus Garvey. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Like other people who use in Marcus his Garvey. Class. Other people use Marcus Garvey like uh, Nkrumah builds a nation. Other people use. They were uh, contemporary. Uh, they work together though. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I'm you saying. You keep mentioning Nkrumah. Like they literally work together. Yeah. When you say they work together, you you you're more should like like it's kind of like like it's it's like minimal. It's like it's like for instance like I'm sitting down in. Uh, Alton Maddox Jr.'s meetings, you know, I'm no, but like no, no, exactly. actually no. I'm saying actually, that no, I'm because I'm like just sitting down in there. You know what I mean? Like like Alton Maddox Jr. is the is the is the is the, is the real person there, and I'm just kind of like the footwork soldier. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's it doesn't like Amos Wilson is just a famous American speaker. So African consciousness is totally trash. African consciousness? Yeah. I don't I don't know what that means. Why would I say that's trash? Why would you say that's trash? And even and even when you mention um, Nation of Islam, he accurately and historically, especially because I'm, I'm looking at page eighty two, describes that as just an Islamic version of Garvey's same organizational method. So it's like every Nation of Islam that to negate, that's that's incorrect though. Nation of Islam was a sex cult for Elijah Muhammad. I would never. No, 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 okay. no, no. Come so, on. so he's You're just having sex with sex a bunch cults? of secretaries. He's just having a, sex with a bunch of secretaries. Are you saying the entire institution was a sex cult? Uh, I. It seems like the basis of the institution was to get this guy some ponani, like a lot of other cults. You know. I mean, just because, just, just, just because, because the leader, did something the immoral, leader, does the leader, not the entire system just because the leader. The leader does something, it doesn't mean... Like, what are you talking about? The leader? The leader okay, of the so organization like, okay. so, is, so, is, 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 is impregnating... Tariq, Tariq Fraud Sheed is seen as, like, the pro-black uh, social media. And then let's say that he cheats on his wife with a white girl. And then everybody would say, okay, all pro-black, pro-Africa is bad. Because look at this dude. Tariq Nasheed is not an organization. Thing. Not in a secretive organization that's feeding him young... Uh, Mixed girls to say that, to, 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 no, impregnate. to say that the nation of Islam was a sex cult is incredibly offensive. You're saying that there That's were incredibly. So you're saying there are no there sex were, cults. I'm not saying that there weren't bad people. You're there. saying I'm there are no the sex cults in a. So you're saying that there are no sex cults in 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 uh in, in, in American uh, history. There's no sex there cults. There definitely are. are. There are definitely but to are. To classify the entire institution as that, as if everybody was having orgies, pedophilic not orgies, everybody, is but incredibly offensive. It's not everybody, but the uh the leader was. That, that's why uh, I don't even know if that's I, I don't I don't know the accuracy of that statement. Um, I know that there possibly was some relationships with some nineteen year olds, but again, to classify that as a sex cult, I think would be inaccurate and offensive. Of course, you would think I, that. I don't think that's accurate. But what 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 did what did what did uh what did 
What did uh? How did Malcolm X summarize it? Malcolm X closest to the development of the nation of Who Islam. Who apologized and wanted to unite later on? What did ahead. he say about it? What did Malcolm he did X say about it? He not have the correct information that we have today. The idea that they were sixteen-year-olds. Current information, you know, suggests that they were nineteen and they were they were not underage. And how old was how old was Elijah Muhammad? He was an, he was an older man, but if adult women make that decision themselves, you do not have any power over. Oh, over a religious leader, they make the decision themselves you with do a religious not have leader. The power if adult women make that decision, okay. you do not have power. And over what did Amos? Things. And what did Malcolm X say about the uh, uh, thing? He says, he "I shall never." That. He obviously did not at that time. I he shall never that. rest until I have undone the harm I did. To so many well-meaning Negroes, I totally reject Elijah Muhammad's racist philosophy, which he has labeled Islam, only to fool and, 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 and misuse and gullible exist. people, exist. which he has and labeled exist, right? Islam only to fool exist, right? and misuse gullible people. Now, again, we're not no, really Muhammad's talking about doesn't exist. his mosque doesn't exist. What does that have to do with anything? The, ma, the the Islamic institution that he created in tandem with the OAA. Again, I don't know. Exist. I don't fully understand what you're trying to do. I'm quoting what Amos, you're, uh, you're what Malcolm X said. He had that beef with the NOI when he died, and he didn't. That's a lie. He says he this in the New York Times in while Europe. in Mecca. So while he's in Mecca, he says that, that I was before he established the Muhammad's Mosque with the OAU. Come on. What about it? I don't understand. What are you trying to say? He did not have that position when he was assassinated. He was trying to unite all black people regardless. The OAE was about not just black people. What does that have to do with Elijah Muhammad? What does that have to do with Elijah Muhammad? What does that do with Elijah Muhammad? He was trying to work with them. He was trying to work with the nation of Islam. He was trying to work with them. You're saying he was trying to work with the nation of Islam before they killed him. Or before they, or before some yes. people killed him. Okay. He was trying to communicate. And, and again, I don't want to make this conversation about that. I All don't right. have that evidence right in front of me. Exactly. But you don't. Like, you I don't. don't have that evidence so, right so I wouldn't lie and say that I do. All I, right. So that's, that's it, it wouldn't make any sense. My file. But no, there's there's no evidence. That is so, but, but that is so Here's beyond saying. the point. That Here's is so saying. unbelievably beyond the point. No, the point being that uh, anybody who's esteeming the uh, nation of Islam at this moment uh, when Malcolm X himself says that he that without the nation of Islam, you would not have modern black. Consciousness. I would have. I would not have what? The modern black consciousness would not exist after Garvey. Well, modern black consciousness is trash. What what don't you understand about that? Compared to Garvey, is trash. It, it was a so would sharp decline. Would, so I rather, would I rather be, be dead? dead? What does that even mean? So you would not. Be, you you don't prefer African consciousness. What are you talking about? You don't. You don't like African consciousness. You feel like. You feel like. You feel like. I don't even know what you're trying to say. You feel like if if Elijah Muhammad never had any activity, that where would Khalid come from? Where would Khalid Muhammad came from? The whole world would be different. That's the point. But where would Khalid Muhammad have came from? Where would individuals like that have come I, from? I I'm not really like 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 I don't know what that's supposed to mean to me. Like, like who? Because you don't, you don't like. You're saying that you know, unless we have this sex obviously, cult, you do not like revolutionaries. How do I not like revolutionary. revolutionaries? I don't understand. Are you, are you suggesting that Nyerere and Kruma and and Thomas Sankara owe their existence to Elijah Muhammad? Is that your suggestion? I'm suggesting that Elijah Muhammad carried a mantle when. Are you suggesting that Nyerere, Nyerere Sankara, and 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 uh. Jomo Kenyatta, oh, their the existence. Of Islam actually worked with are those you suggesting? Movements. They actually did. Are work you with suggesting them. that they, they owe their existence to Elijah Muhammad? They partially, partially because oh. the NOI did work with those anti-colonial. So movements. you feel like if that the NOI didn't that. work with them, that they would have never succeeded? Oh, what? What? You? No, I'm they saying it, if you feel like you're, you're saying that if they didn't, that the NOI would have never, that that that, that they would have never succeeded. Is that what you're saying? It was part and parcel of their success. Are you saying... Do I know that so, for sure? Do no, I know that for exactly. sure? No, but I'm no. saying it helped and it was part and parcel of their Again, success. Again, irrelevant, the irrelevant, irrelevant, is. irrelevant. Again, you're... you're How is that irrelevant? Even Carlos A. Cooks didn't acknowledge those people. He called them fake. Oh, yeah. Phonies. Oh, 
this person disagreed, this person dis- disagreed, this person disagreed. That invalidates the system just because, you know, right, particular yeah. individuals disagree. All right, look, uh, we're, we're, we're not really supposed to be talking about the nation of Islam, but the point, the point would stand. Because I, tra- I was trying to get back to his references with Garvey, and I was going back to your... Th- no, you went to uh, Am- you went to on, Elijah Amos Muhammad. Not even a Muslim. You oh, went to Nation of Islam. What about it? Huh? What about it, though? Nation of Islam was trash. What, what don't you understand about that? <laughs> what about what? I said, what about him not being a Muslim? What does that have to do with anything? So why why in the world would you think that he agreed with everything Elijah Muhammad did? He obviously didn't. He's just saying the economic growth and capacity of the NOI had is obviously reminiscent of the UNIA because that's where he got it from. Yeah, of course. Uh, Elijah, uh, Muhammad a was, Elijah Muhammad no was Elijah Muhammad was a African kind of studies professor would deny that. Elijah Muhammad worked in the UNIA. He was a captain or That's something. Clear and obvious. Yeah. Clear that he is was. a fact of history. But nobody can deny that. But he used it in order to manipulate black folk and obviously get some punani and money. Okay. His personal okay personal thing misdeeds. Whatever. That's Whatever. what a lot of them do. What do you think? What do you think your man Tariq Nasheed does? What I mean, first what do you think? What, what do you think Yvette Carnell does? It's a, called a grift. So, so you're, so you're it's called a problem. grift. They're all grifters, and everybody knows this. Okay, I mean, I'm not. I, I, I don't personally on that personal issue of Elijah Muhammad. He's a grifter. Really my He's a grifter. Really not my concern. Amos Wilson should know but, that. But, Anybody should know that. The guy was a grifter. On, hold on. The fact, the fact that you just mentioned uh, of Elijah Muhammad working in the Garvey movement and using those principles to is exactly grift. what Amos Wilson mentioned on a- page 82. I just said that Al Sharpton was in the UAM, the United African Movement, under Attorney Maddox, who was doing great work. Did he use the methodology? Did he use the methodology? He's one of the he top, he's the HNIC today, the head Negro in charge. Oh my gosh! But did he use the revolutionary methodology? Who? Come on. Did it? Did, did, did um um Sharpton? He. I'm saying he took from the uh, UAM's method and has his own little meeting every Saturday. Okay, I mean, okay, to this day, to this you point. Wanna, you just want to completely discount it? Okay. You I'm just saying that grifters do. Like, you're just saying. Just, look. I mean, I mean, again, grifters again, do again, that. Again, grifters come from. Uh, grifters use a genuine thing, and they and they switch it up for you. They shake it up. You know, nobody could deny that. Literally, ADOS but, but has a genuine you, concern. ADOS has every, reparations. Every single point that I brought up, you've done this to. So because that's like, okay, revolutionary. Do you want to cut that off? Just you can. I guess you can cut that off. All right, bro. Um, All right. Uh, and I guess I guess I. Uh, sorry, I, I can't go to Demetrius. I mean, Demetrius said to go to page four forty. I don't know. All right, I'll do it at four forty quickly, and then we're gonna try to go the last point, which was the uh uh Obama. Oh no, no the uh other thing. So let's see. Four forty is the planned. Permanent economic depression. So 440 says many of the social and political problems prevalent in the national African American community stems from the fact that for the past several decades it has suffered an economic depression. In a sense, the Great Depression has virtually never left a very large segment of the community. The black community has always been the major source of surplus labor in America. Uh, that is, it is always the first fired when white business employees decide that they need to cut their workforce for whatever reason, and the last hired after other ethnic groups, especially white workers, are hired, rehired, blah blah blah. On the basis of the traditional economic and hiring trends just described, many in the African American community may reach the conclusion that the economic upturn of conditions which approach full employment would be in their best interest since as increasing economic growth soaks up unemployed whites and other preferred ethnic groups they will increasingly hire in turn. There is one major problem with this wish for scenario, however, both business and government do not see full employment or even really low unemployment as necessarily a good thing. For business employers, full employment means that the workers would take advantage of the scarcity of labor and force them or uh, blackmail them into paying higher wages by the increasing business costs and perhaps reducing profits. For the government, the concern is that full employment or very low unemployment is pushing up wages will also increase inflation, thereby decreasing the value of real income or reducing the purchasing power of the dollar. Consequently, both business and government have a vested interest in maintaining a certain level of average unemployment. The debate between economists and government bureaucracies and quasi-governmental agencies such as the Federal Reserve concerns what level of unemployment should be maintained in order to hold down wages and inflation rates. The current economic recovery has occasioned the debate as to whether unemployment should be allowed to remain at 8 million or 7 million unemployed before a shortage of workers begins to push up the inflation rate. 
According to the Times, about 8.5 million people are now jobless for a 6.5% unemployment rate. When government and businesses uh, policy requires a standing unemployment rate of between 55 to 6.5%, then it is effect requires that the standing unemployment rate in African American community remains between 14 to 17% deep recessionary or depression rates, given that the black unemployment rate is consistently approximately two and a half times the average rate of the nation as a whole. This amounts to a virtual governmental and co complete a corporate conspiracy to maintain the African American community in planned permanent recession or depression. The white Americans, corporate establishment, and other ethnic American groups as owners of businesses and employers therefore collude with the white American controlled government to maintain a mutually beneficial a beneficiary employment rate for themselves by creating, maintaining, and containing the highest employment rate in the African American community. This collusive policy all but assures excruciating levels of social problems in the community as well. This being the case, the African nation, American nation is faced with a major decision. It must increase its ownership of business and productive investments, its savings, its equity and productive corporations of all sizes, its quality of human capital, highly trained, highly skilled personnel, and its ability to favorably influence governmental and economic policy to the greatest possible degree or sink into reversible, irreversible economic and social degradation. So yeah, looking at that, it was, it's interesting. It's interesting in a small sense, but it is not, like, it is, it is not revolutionary. It is, it is not revolutionary. Because it, because it, it had, how is, how is, how, it, is, how is describing a depression not revolutionary? I'm, I'm saying it had the potential to be revolutionary, but it didn't take it. How, but how is it not revolutionary? All right, let me, let me say what revolutionary, describing a yeah, depression. What revolutionary would have been would be saying, hey, you know what, we're going, we have this depression. And the only way to get, and, and essentially it's the government itself, which is uh, forcing this depression on us, right? The whole system is geared to, against us. Therefore, we have to, uh, t you know, remove this system. It's the, the problem is the system, right? The problem is the system, and, and the solution is to get rid of the system. Instead, what he does is he outlines that the solution would be to try to work within the system uh, according no, to no, 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 come on, come on, come on. What are the solutions I mean, he says? The solutions he says, the again. solutions he again. says is this being the case, the African American nation is faced with a major decision. It must increase its ownership of businesses and productive investments, its savings, its equity and productive corporations of all sizes, its quality of human capital, highly trained, highly skilled personnel, and its ability to favorably influence governmental economic policy to the greatest possible degree or sink into irreversible economic and social degradation. So again, there's no solution here that involves... The solution is literally, it's literally, again, because you take away the context oh. every single time. You just, take, you just take it away. You just rip it to pieces. I'm just like, reading what he wrote. Don't put it in light of the, of the thesis of the text. The thesis of the chapter. Just I'm just reading it. what he wrote. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Because, and not putting it in con you can so you're saying so many things. You're saying that so you're saying that I have to say you're saying that the way I should read this is to say, you know what? He said he's a Garveyite. So even though all he's talking but about, you don't, you're not even, you're not all even he's talking about is liberal. How? All he's doing is talking about liberalism. How? He's just talking that. about liberalism. Look, all he's doing is talking about liberalism. But because he's a Garveyite, it's revolutionary. No, whoa, 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 Liberal is banning Marxists and banning Republicans and Democrats from your institutions? We are reading... Liberal is, liberal is African identity? Liberalism was created... I'm talking about African page 441. Okay? At the context isolated in the vacuum. No, nobody on any level of academy would take this seriously. If you if you went to the academy with this type of analysis, nobody would take it seriously. If I went to the academy because that the academy the academy is not even a revolutionary institution though. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying If I took it to a non-revolutionary institution, you are decontextualizing everything in the text. I'm everything. not decontextual, I'm just reading no the chapter. Whatsoever. You're not even you're not even All contextualizing right. the author's own view. So by reading the chapter, I am doing something bad. You are not. Uh, you are not reading it in context. I can read any book out there out of context. But well, the trouble is this. The trouble is this. His discussion on the democ Democrats and the Republicans 
would come after that. As, as well, I'm just gonna guess that it would come after page. What was that? I was on page 440. His discussion on the uh, chronological arrangement is irrelevant. Well, I mean, I'm just saying if I read it at that point, it would be like, what? And that's it. Like I would just read that and say, huh? You have to read it one to one. A book like this, you have to read it one to one again. One to one. Not, what does that mean? This is this. All right, look. Let's where, just where go to the, the end. The end justifies the beginning, and the beginning justifies the end because yeah. the thesis of the chapters are rolled together in the central again, thesis. Again, you have to. Text. You have this to. About the practical methodology to build black power. Yes, That's what it's, is about. it's and it's impractical. All this is impractical. How is that? How is that impractical? Because Literally, you don't have. Exa- you're I'm not an here. organized you people. You look, say, you say it's not revolutionary. I give you the example of John Gwee. Cut that out. I give you an example of Garvey. Cut that out. You didn't give me an example of John Gui. You cut that out. You didn't give me an example of John Gui. He literally says in the text, assimilation and integration is a bad idea. He literally says that. Yes, he says all of this stuff. All right, look, 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 look. What I'm going to say is this. The reason why I say it's impractical is because you have no organizational capacity because you're not a nation. You understand? And because you're not a nation, there's no way. (laughs) Listen to me. There's no way for you to increase ownership. Him calling to work for African nations is bad. Him what? Him suggesting that we work with and trade with African nations is bad. It means nothing. It means nothing if you're not. Nothing. If it's just rhetoric, it's just rhetoric. Wait, wait, wait. What? 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 Look. Calling. Wait. Calling to build international organizations. Right, you can you can say anything you want. Rhetoric? Look, you can say anything you want. Why does he fight against the assimilationist leadership establishment on page 444? He doesn't fight against anything. He's just writing. Look, let me see. We said 444. He's a 4444. You said 444. Assimilationist look leadership at, look establishment at, look institute. Look at the references. Look at the references through that where he's where he's talking about. Yes. How, okay. Um, the bourgeois civil rights crap yes. literally repressed the entrepreneurial aspect yes. of us to not associate ourselves with that. Like, okay. how do you explain that? Yeah. All right. Well, look again. The thing is this: that you're, you're the thing. This is why I say it's impractical because. Four forty-three. Two. Assimilationist, integrationist, mm-hmm. black, black bourgeois, bourgeois leadership, leadership which, which equals essentially... racial and economic subordination. He literally classifies assimilationism and integrationalism as bad. I know, and he and then he advocates for it. That's the problem. But but how but, does he advocate for that? How but, is you for self advocating for that? When he talks about appealing to major corporations to give them a little bit more, Crushed that's exactly you, pre, uh, exactly uh, that's exactly what the black bourgeoisie do. Exactly. The black bourgeoisie pressure the people who write their checks. Uh. To, huh? Yeah, for themselves, yeah. They pressure them? Really? That's how they get it. That, so you, you're, you're telling me Al Sharpton never uh, pressured uh, any anybody who wrote his check. I'm, I'm in New York. I know the story of Al Sharpton, okay? Al Sharpton had a whole that, economic know, protest. Obviously. Whole economic protest, right? A whole economic boycott after the death of of uh one of these one of these young gentlemen in uh in uh one of these Diallo. you know no not Diallo uh but he this young gentleman was killed by a, a gang of white folk and then there was an economic boycott and afterward after the economic boycott he got rich okay he's been doing that his whole career that's called pressure he, pro- he he has the people there's protest. There's different types of pressure, sure. All right, so then it's exactly what the black bourgeoisie do. So it's not really that different. No, but uh, this pressure is Garveyite pressure in the tradition of Garvey. Thing, and but his thing, but the thing is this: that he, he there's there's the, like the thing is that it doesn't even make any sense in any because sort of he, way. He contextualizes it everywhere. It doesn't why. make it's any sense. It's never gonna sense. make sense if you don't read it. No, properly. it's never gonna make any sense because you have no. Nation, you have no African American community. But so so you okay, have yeah, no yeah. African American community. You literally, you, you literally cannot literally have. Said that him, you cannot sure, even have sure, an African American sure, community. Sure, sure. Let's say. We so it doesn't even make any sense. But you literally, 
You literally just said it doesn't make him calling for us to build with, work with, and train with. It doesn't make it. How are you going to do it without having? Practical. You don't have an entity that can do it. He's calling to build one. But you can't even build it. Oh my gosh. I and I and I'm I'm I'm, I'm I need to go back to the figures because I really want to find that that council thing. But I don't I don't even think you're gonna accept that. I don't know. Well, there's, there's literally again. Nothing. Every time I give an example, you just don't even accept. I, it. So but like, but I look because all right, let me just let me just go to this Cosby example because that was like probably the most ridiculous one. Seven hundred sixty-four. Okay, so 764, he says, now, after he talks about this uh, super capitalist, Reginald Lewis, I guess, right? 764. Yeah, Reginald Lewis is, um, uh, like, a super capitalist, I guess. Uh, he's exalted in this book as, uh, let's see, well, basically, he's, like, a multimillionaire. Like, he multiplies his money by, you know, pretty much... Getting into, uh, I want to say, trading or acquisition, something along those lines, right? But he then he then he ends six seven sixty four. Like basically, he he introduces John uh, Rev, he introduces Lewis in, on page seven hundred sixty one, talking about investment clubs, right? Uh, yeah, he says uh, the late African American Reginald Lewis, CEO of the Lewis Company, Wall Street lawyer and financier, provides an illustrious example of how creative, aggressive market know how can be utilized by intrepid African American business persons to gain wealth and power in the global marketplace, right? So he goes in and talks about how this guy is like this super capitalist and he's a good example of of uh, of, of, of and, and Amos Wilson is pro individualist, right? Like you're applying in this point right I'm now. I'm just saying he goes all over the place, right? He he, he articulates <laughs> everything again. He, he, it's like don't it's like put it in context. You're not putting it in context. You just, you're just not. So you're just going to dismiss the Reginald like, Lewis example. Context. You're going to dismiss the Reginald Lewis example for the camera. No, I'm literally telling you. I'm literally telling right. you that he's, he's saying, he's so saying let's, that this individual. Let's read 764, okay? Reginald Lewis demonstrates how I, a black I, I man. Understand, I understand your point. No, no, no. Let, I've, let's, read let's, the, I've read the book before. Let's, let's I've read this. I've literally read this part before. Let's just. Uh, you yeah. want to read it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, right. go ahead, read it. Reginald Lewis demonstrates how a black man in the face of racist and financial restraints with a little money and a lot of in 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 ingenuity, a facile, a, oh yeah, facile, or whatever, social intelligence and deep knowledge of this field, lots of heart and self confidence and a little luck can break out of the black business reservation and range freely across the full terrain of national and international business. Lewis uh, began his trek with $1 million, uh, something that's totally normal, I guess. Uh, today, there are many more African Americans with hundreds of times the personal and financial wealth he began with. There are now African American athletes who are multimillionaires, black entertainers worth more than four hundred million dollars who earn upwards of sixty million dollars per year, black business persons who have amassed fortunes of over two hundred million dollars. For example, Bill Cosby's famous comedian, Bill Bill Cosby, famous comedian and television star who is reportedly worth four hundred million dollars and continues to earn millions from residuals has made serious offers to purchase the National Broadcasting Corporation. Barry Gordy sold Motan for some $300 million. John Johnson of Ebony Magazine fame has amassed a fortune surpassing $100 million. In fact, Johnson Publishing Company Incorporated uh, achieved sales of $298 million. Uh, sorry, $293.8 million in 1993. Entertainers such as Michael Jackson have amassed fortunes in the tens of millions, a number approaching $100 million or more. Black entertainers are among the highest paid in the entertainment industry. For example, Ford's Magazine's 993 list of the nation's highest paid entertainers for 1992 and 1993 in terms of estimates of total gross, gross earnings includes Oprah Winfrey, number one, at $98 million, uh, increased since. Bill Cosby, number three, at $66 million. Prince, number five, at $49 million. Michael Jackson, number 12, at $42 million. And Eddie Murphy, number 21, at $30 million. The realization that these entertainers have been at the top of their profession for more than several years gives us some idea of their combined earnings and worth at this time. The five entertainers listed here earned roughly $300 million in 1992 to 1993 alone. The earnings of these stars combined with those of the lesser millionaire African-American entertainers and sports figures indicates the hundreds of millions of dollars, perhaps a billion or more, earned yearly by a relatively small collection of individuals. Corporate relations and investments among such individuals would be quite significant for the economic advancement of the African American community and African peoples worldwide. There are millions more dollars held by black institutions and organizations. These millions appropriately leveraged, organized into various consortiums, partnerships, and other economic formations 
instrumentally manipulated by a people imbued with an African-centered consciousness, intentionality, purpose, free wielding, highly flexible creativity and ingenuity, and an iron will determination to win liberation by any means necessary can deeply penetrate the American economy and establish the African-American community as a national and international force to be reckoned with. And make your point. The issue with this is that you mm -hmm. have, like, you are no, like, all right, well, let's say it this way. Oprah mm -hmm. Winfrey cannot use her money as she wants in America. Uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Bill Cosby arrested. Uh, 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 Michael Jackson frequently on trial. And some people mm -hmm. say assassinated. Um, the, the, the point that we have to understand about, and then the thing about entertainers in general, is that they are people who are bought already. It is like the, it's like the, uh, if you want to use metaphors, it's like the black overseer. Okay? It's yeah. like people in the field saying, hey, you know what? The black overseer is doing quite well. Right? If mm -hmm. only we can get the black overseer to overthrow, I mean, no, sorry, the black overseer to help out the, uh, the, the, the people on the field, right? Then we, like, mm -hmm. we would become a, a, a force to be reckoned with. It is rhetoric. Revolution for yeah, out, of, out of context, out of context. Revolution. Make the point. Okay. Revolution. Okay. Because because he's revolution. talking about the institutions. He's talking about the collective institution. Re but there's no institutions, and there won't be any institutions. That's that, but that's not true. Again, going back to the auxiliary, going back to Garvey's auxiliary, going back to what he said about quasi-governmental organization. Yes, he's but Garvey in America. To describe if they have this capacity, the group has a larger capacity. Garvey in America would not like the, the things you're talking about. The UNIA in America, as a organization that does not make like it for the for the as a as a division as a military division because that's what it was. But go ahead. All right. When you say auxiliary, are you talking about the men, the men, the men's only organization? Is that what you're talking about? But. I'm talking about the method that he used to build the UNIA. The yeah, UNIA is again, a collection of auxiliaries. Yeah, you're, you're, you're discussing, you're trying to discuss the UNIA. And I... I, I it, because I, I'm, ta I'm, I'm giving you the context of where he got it from. That's what I'm doing. I keep yeah. doing it, I've been doing it the But the thing is this, alright, exactly, you've been doing it the whole call. He does not... Like, I don't even think he even cites Garvey. UNIA was financed by Madam C.J. Walker, Walker he partially. He doesn't even cite, like, in the bibliography, he doesn't even, like, include uh, uh, philosophy and opinions. Only, at best, Garvey and Garveyism. You know? Garvey but, and Garveyism is more, it, it, it elucidates his philosophy more than philosophy and opinions. All right, because but... Because it gives actual examples. Again, I feel, it feels like, as far as I can tell... You're like what you're trying to say is that you know because you are under the impression that he's this perfect Garveyite, I guess. That's what he's no wait whoa 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 say no <laughs> I'm under the impression that he's perfect. No, a perfect Garveyite. Uh, because he never he, said yeah, it. Right. Never said that. Okay, where, where does he say that. he's a Garveyite? Let's just let's just let's just settle that. Where does he say he's a Garveyite? Where does he say Every that in this book? Every single time. Where does he say that in the book? Okay, where does he mention Garvey? 82, 344, All right, just give me where he says it. By 10. So 82, like, page 82. Let's look at page 82. Where does he say that he's a Garvey? Page 82. Yeah, he doesn't say he's a Garvey. Man. I mean, and where, where does he say? Do you, and, and where does do he say? You, where does he do say he's agree? a Garvey? Where does but, he but say? On, I, I, where? I, I, I this question. Where? I, where? is where he mentions Garvey. He mentions. You can look in the back of the book. Where he mentions Garvey. Right? Yeah, where he mentions so Garvey. Where does he say he's a Garvey? Where, he Garvey where Garvey does he is say a... he's a Garvey? Because you keep repeating that. I'm literally trying to explain it to you. You can go in the back of the book. Look, 429, Amy Jakes Garvey. Um, Gar on, on 874, this is where it is. It says 82, 344, 420, 425, 428 to 430, 443, 510, 530, 601, 628, 812, 851. Okay, Those what about it? Where he mentions uh, Garvey, right? Okay. Right? So what about it? And then I have to I have to ask you this question because, what about because it, though? I know he, that you're going to try to wiggle around this. All right. Right? Go for it. 
20, 20th century Pan-African nationalism, right, is, is that the equivalent or is that associated with Garveyism? And I know you're going to say, no, it's not, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer. Wait, hold on a second. I'm just asking you, where does he say he's a Garveyite? Because everything I'm saying, you're dismissing with this idea that because he's a Garveyite, it, it's, it's all right. Where does he say he's a Garveyite? No, no. I'm where does he? You're connect, telling me that he's a Garveyite. I'm trying to you keep all right. The context. context. So where does he say? You keep saying because he said he's a Garveyite. Where does he say that? We are we are fully aware of the influence where? of the black or African tenant organizations or movements such as that led by Marcus Messiah Garvey. What right? page is that? What page is that? Right. What page? To read that whole entire passage. What page? We are fully aware of the influence of other black or African tenor organizations or movements such as that led by Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Describing him what? as a forerunner to his ideology. What page is this? That's 82. That's the first reference. You oh, can 82? See all, okay, hold on a second. Page 874 has all of the Garvey references. I know, I see. I'm just saying, but I mean, just referencing Garvey doesn't make you a Garveyite. That just makes you, that's me just referencing. But he's saying that he's the forerunner of black or african centered organizations. Wait, where, where is this? Let me see. What, 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 In 82. What? All right, 82. You said we must hasten, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are fully, all right, so let's see. We must hasten to notify our readers that we are not herein proselytizing for the anti Islam. We merely use it as an example of a black centered organization of the cultural, psychosocial, socioeconomic, and empowerment outcomes which can devolve from organizations whose founding ideology is black or African centered in context compared to those ideologies white or European centered or centered around outside ethnic group uh, philosophies, ideologies, cultures, and religions. We are fully aware of the influence of other black or African centered organizations or movements, such as that led by Marcus Garvey, the precursor of the nation of Islam, in a number of very important ways. The key ingredients which define the nation of Islam is as socioeconomic. Uh, sociocultural outcomes and its power and influence can be utilized by other black organizations, the black community as a whole, to gain power liberated uh, uh, without converting to Islam as a religion. These include an African centered identity. Yeah, okay. D dude, what are you trying to say? Literally. Bruh, bruh. Do you not see that? Yeah, of course Do I don't see, see that? that. It's not there. He literally said Marcus Garvey was the forerunner of the black and African centered organizations. No, he didn't. He He's said the precursor of the Nation of Islam. But he literally describes it as the African centered ideological movement of African consciousness. Where does he say that? How You're do saying you not, literally where? How do you not get that? Grace what? first. Where does that come from? Wait, hold on where a second. Where does that come from? You're saying where does literally. Where does come from earlier in the page? Again, you're, 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 you're saying literally. Okay? Where is it literally? Right there. Bro, you, you're making stuff up now. Right there. He's saying, he's saying that. We are aware of the influence of other of black Marcus or African. Movement as no, black that's not what he said. He said we are fully aware of the influence of other black or African centered organizations. So or if he doesn't say, hey, hello, I am Amos Wilson. I am a Garveyite. You keep saying he did. Garveyite? No, he you kept saying, saying right that there. he's a Garveyite. He's literally saying you're right there. No, he's not. How do you not see that? How do you not see that? Because it's not there, dude. <laughs> he literally... Okay, okay, so that uh, means absolute... Okay, okay, okay. No, that does Oni, mean nothing. Oni, he, that means nothing. Yes. That reference to Garvey means absolutely nothing. 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 Let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next Wait, one. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want people to, to see what... Like, you're trying to finesse us for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, my God. What? Bruh. Read it again. He's it talking again. about the again. nation of Islam. Okay. Why does he mention the nation of Islam? Why? Because he's the whole the chapter. The whole exactly. He the whole entire chapter is about the nation of Islam. Okay. It's about it's about the social and cultural origins of power. No, That's look. What it's about. On page eighty, what is the title of 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 this section? On page eighty. That's the section in the chapter. All right. So so the section on the chapter is what's it called? Just for the people at home. The, the people at home. Of power. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the on page 80, the subtitle of the, is the what? The section is called the Nation of Islam. The That's Nation the of Islam. Chapter, yeah. So he's only talking about the Nation of Islam in this whole section. Okay. He's talking in that he's, section. In this section, of the he's talking about, about the social, exactly the cultural origin. You, you of power. No, 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 Everything. because how is this decontextualized? Everything. Like, oh bro, God, because I'm talking about oh. the chapter, and you're you want an ice? Why are you trying to bro. isolate a section from the chapter? He has one mention of Garvey in this entire chapter, and that's it's there. Huh? He has one mention of Garvey in this entire chapter, and it's there. 
Okay, on page 82. Mm-hmm. That's the first mention. And, and again, I said... I, That's the... Oh, I hold said, on a second. That means, I want to show people how you're trying to finesse us. Take it out. I'm trying to show people how you're trying to finesse us. How trying to finesse? Because what he's talking about in this chapter, as you figured from the subtitle, is Nation of Islam. Correct? Yes. In, in the next, section, in, in the section, next section, is. in the yeah, next, in that exactly. Section. In the next section, is the spirit of war, and the first thing he says is it's important to note that the nation of Islam is organized, as his name implies, as a permanent nation state. So he's talking about the nation of Islam throughout. His mention to Marcus Garvey, his mention of Marcus Garvey, was just to say that the nation of Islam was not the only organization, but there were other organizations such as the UNIA. Okay? That was a that's all he said. Of Islam in a number of exactly. Very ways. But that's all he said. He did, did, he nowhere. Really, but why nowhere. Hold on a second. There? Hold on a second. Should nowhere in that passage does it mean that that means that he's a Garvia. Nothing there says that he's a Garvia. And you can't you can't finesse us because that was the whole reason why you brought it up. You said over here it's there that he says that he's a Garvia because this. Nothing in this passage even suggests that he's talking about the UNIA. All he's saying is that I'm not just talking, I'm talking about the Nation of Islam a lot, not to promote Nation of Islam. I'm aware that there are other groups out there, and a, a prominent one is the nation, is, is Marcus Garvey's. But it does not necessarily mean that that means that he's a Garvey. So, so that was a nice finesse, that was a nice try, but you can go to the next exam. But that, that was definitely an invalid exam. And I think you should concede that point. Otherwise, I, otherwise you might be called Donald Trump. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just because Donald Trump president, don't mean you can't concede, man. Uh, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just messing now. But uh, yeah, what are you doing, bro? You there, bro? You there? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. If you're saying anything, what happened? Are you, are you there? All right. Anyway, so I mean, I mean, I think that's a. I mean, it would be nice if you found an example of Amos Wilson as a Garvey. Uh, I can't hear you. log out and come back in because I can't hear you. And uh, I mean, if you're talking, I can't tell. All right. Anyway, so I mean, I guess I could probably just end the uh, thing because otherwise I'll sound like I'm talking to myself. Uh, uh, but all right, all right. So family, I think you guys can see. Uh, I mean, so I would just conclude, you know, when we talk about whether something is revolutionary or revolutionary, uh, the idea, the concept behind that, I would say, let me just check up, see if he's texting, because right? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, somebody said, uh, let me see something. All right, yeah, we can't, we can't hear this guy. Wait, okay. I'm just typing inside the chat. Hold on a second. All right. Anyway, so what I'll say is that, yeah, overall, I mean, like I said, the, there's no real example of a uh, revolutionary. And to say that, you know, uh, forming a, a true nation state, it's it, there's at best a delusion that we are a nation. And of course, I would say the reason why that's a delusion is because you do not have any uh, real self-governance of yourself. And it, it would be impractical to even uh, get one. Uh, given how dispersed and how beholden African uh, Americans are to another nation as it is, you know, uh, essentially African Americans are citizens in another nation, and 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 you know, like what nations usually do, which is you know taxation and have their own government and you know supply their own resources, their own infrastructure to their uh, to themselves. That's something that cannot exist. Uh, that would not exist in the American uh, government because the American government, you, you'd have to have permission from the American government to do much of what it is. Like, like for instance, the American government could imprison you for not paying taxes, but if you were to imprison uh, uh, an African American for not paying taxes uh, to, to, to your African American nation, it would, be, it would be criminal according to the American uh, government and the American government would have done and present you for doing that. So uh, there's a lot, 
like like the idea of an African American community doing any of these things, although it sounds good, and it, it you know it, it there's no way to actually do it or compel people in the same sense as the United States can compel. Are you there? Huh? Wait, can you can you now hear me? Yeah, something something you disconnected and I couldn't hear anything anymore. Yeah, I told you disconnect and come back in. I told you that it didn't work. But I was just going to summarize, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you didn't find anything where he said that he was a garb yet, but uh, I was just going to summarize. They... He literally says it right there on the page, and, and he describes it. And then Pan-African nationalism... On what page? You obviously don't think that, you obviously don't think that Pan-African nationalism is garbyism, so... Um, what page? On page 82? Bro, um, I don't know what 82, and then go to page... Uh, he doesn't um, say it on 82, but... And, and then again, uh, again... He really doesn't say it on 82, again, but... Part of, part of textual analysis is understanding the style that the re, that the author writes in. Oh, That's part geez, of textual analysis. Guy. So, like, uh, every time... So he, I mean, seriously, okay. every, every time that he's talking about black entrepreneurialism, self-help, and then he uses those examples of Garvey. And then again, he's uh, the author of Garveyism versus the New World Order. Are we really having a conversation about whether the author of Garveyism versus the New World Order is a Garvey? Are we literally having that conversation? I haven't even touched that book, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not. So you, can't, so you can't talk about Amos Wilson. You can't even... like. How but we're talking about Blue for black how power. Can, how can you come? I know, but literally, literally. So you're saying if I don't read totally, if I don't totally read this other book, here. if I don't read this other book, then I can't talk about blueprint for black power. That's what you're saying. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you are not familiar with the author, you cannot describe the author. If you're not familiar with him. Well, I mean, look. You can't because look, that look, book, look. in terms of the connection between himself and Garvey, here's I the have thing. that book. Do here's the thing. Pull it out? Here's the thing. Would here's you the like thing. to pull out that book? Hold on a second. Here's the thing that people from home have to understand is that Amos Wilson did not even write this book, Blueprint for Black Power. He's not the author of this book. No. His, his published, he, this, this book was published after he died. So he's not the author of this book. I think his his uh, editor uh, authored it. It's the Bible Plata. So his 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 editor falsely prescribed to him authorship. I think I I mean I what what I mean by when I say that he didn't write it I'm saying that it's possible that it's like it's like it's like when it comes to uh, Malcolm X's autobiography, you know. It's possible oh, that... Come on, no, that's not the same thing. Alex you Haley... You know that that's not the same thing. Okay, hold on a second. Amos Wilson dies in what year? What year does Amos Wilson die? I don't know off the top of my head. All right, hold on a second. Amos Wilson... Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like several years after. Amos Wilson dies in 1995. He dies it in 1995. I know, I know that you Amos Wilson dies in 1995. This book is published in 1998. Okay? So, uh-huh. it's possible. It's possible. That this book. But you have to stretch and speculate. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just kind of give you some sort of credit as to say that maybe, possibly, Amos Wilson was this Garveyite, but this book isn't Garveyite. Would you like, would you like me to open up his text, Garveyism versus the New World Again, Order? there would be a difference between somebody. Like that's what I'm saying, this book right here, we're talking about Blueprint for Black Power, would not be. I know, but I want it. Be, but, but you're just removing the context. So like, I, I'm, I'm just. How am I removing you the context by reading the book? All right. Does he say he's a Garveyite huh? in that book? Does he say explicitly that he's a Garveyite in that book? Yeah, he does. And on, and on right, his read. Wikipedia page, it says that he's a Garveyite. On his Wikipedia oh, page. Oh, yeah, Wikipedia. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Wikipedia means nothing. Okay, it means nothing. What do How you does like, Wikipedia do you like mean something? Wait, do you, you want like to... Read the text, the, the Garveyite text. Okay, let me, let me find it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take me a while, but let me find it in my library. Okay. All right. Uh, can you hear us? Can you hear yeah, us while actually, you're looking? I mean, because, I mean, it's getting kind of late. I don't know. Are you going to try to stay the entire night? No, no, no. All right. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what instead I'm going to do, oh, it looks like this might be, it looks like the PDF might be up here. What instead I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, I'm just going to describe to people why it's nonsense to even and, and say that's, any And that text, um, my apologies, that text is actually called African-Centered Consciousness versus the New World Order, Garveyism in the Age of Globalism. That's yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time. Yeah, I, I saw it, I saw it. Um... Well, I guess people at home couldn't see it, but yeah, I, I know it's uh, it's not that. Uh, all right, wait, did you find it? I'm looking for it right now, but you can continue. All right, so yeah, the reason why I want to say that uh, Garvey, 
Uh, oh yeah, the reason why I want to say this is ridiculous because there's no way that you can, uh, like, essentially, a nation, like, what well, things that some nations, the things that most nations would do is they would tax their people, right? They would have a governing body for their people, and they would have a certain, uh, a certain, uh, let's say, border, like, they have a certain amount of land uh, that they kind of control access to, uh, more or less. They have authority of access to and that they have access to imprison uh, their own, like punish and reward their own people, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, the question is that for African Americans, that those conditions do not exist. You cannot force people to pay taxes as an African American. You cannot force people uh, to follow your legal system, your laws, as an African American. And you cannot force people, you cannot control your own borders as an African American. So a lot of the ideas while great are beholden to an American state and because they're beholden to an American state it it like uh, even though you might say something it, it just it's just ridiculous and it would be never evolutionary because there's nothing that you can do in uh th th because if you're beholden to another nation right then 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 a lot of the ideas that you have, uh, won't really amount to much because they can just throw you into a prison. Okay, so um, I have the book, and this is this is the first paragraph. Okay. And it says, We at African World Info Systems reprint here only a segment of the letter from the Honorable Marcus Garvey titled First Message to the Negroes of the World from Atlanta Prison. Okay. Dated February 10th, 1925, so that the reader may begin to f more fully grasp the spirit of a man who inspired our beloved brother, Dr. Amos N. Wilson. And that's the first paragraph. That's not. That's not even it. Amos Wilson's writing, though. It's, I mean, it's I'm sorry. The that's not. The that's not. It's the that's writing not, of the people. Are you serious? Wait, hold are on a second. <laughs> no, th th that's somebody. That's the a third person. Of the people who publish his book. Yeah, I know. That's a third person. You know what I mean? Wait, hold on a second. So is this book? This book is written in 1999. Um, it was. Let me see. Oh gosh. Hold on, but hold on, hold on. Oh, you're, gosh. You're an author, so you know that, hold on, if I write something and oh. it's not published, and then, seriously? Are you serious? Uh, are, are you serious? serious? Are you're you, quoting somebody what, from 1999. You know, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. You're quoting somebody from 1999 saying, you know, and you're saying that that's, but, that's Amos Wilson's work. Literally, literally, writing, so finishing a text and publishing it. But that's the preface. Thing. You're talking about the preface. The preface is not, is not the author. You but, but the, the I, challenge I just, was I just, I just, no 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 the just, challenge okay. was oh for to you to say oh no 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 hold on a second the challenge every, every example that I give literally every example that I give because it doesn't make any sense literally. the challenge the challenge was for you to show how Marcus sorry how Emmett Wilson said I am a guardian I literally just opened up the book and yes. that's the first paragraph but you I, said I, that's, that's the I, preface. I, I, of somebody, of somebody else, of Sabahul Plata, let's say. Sabahul Plata saying, uh, okay, Amos Wilson was okay, a guardian. Okay, hold on. Um, I think, I think this is his, this is his writing. Okay. Um, so then that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Just use his writing, not not Sabahul Plata. The elder Marcus Garvey was a proud. I mean, the entire, like, literally the entire book is about Marcus Garvey. I so understand like, that, but um, where does that like, mean that I'm, he's a I'm guardian? I'm gonna have to find, like, I'm gonna, you can you can continue on your monologue, but I'm gonna have to find a specific example. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, that, that's the challenge. I, I'm, let me let me find a specific that's example that I think would satisfy you, All right. and I think that there would be no way for you no. to move along to that. All so right. it's gonna, it might take me a while though. Uh, of course. All right. Well, just use the, just use the index. Uh, that's what you wanted to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, the point being, though, that, you know, even if I say, you know, I want to, as an African people, uh, I want African Americans to have established working relationships with, uh, Nigeria. The reality is that if you want to have working relationships with Nigeria as an African American people, you have to go through America. You cannot, uh, you cannot do foreign trade with another nation without, uh, engaging the American nation for it. And because uh, pause, I, pause. Can, can I pause you real quick? Okay. I know that you won't accept this, but um, Amos Wilson was a psychotherapist. You're speaking in the third person. Huh? You're speaking in the third person. Is is that from the third so, person? Hold on, hold on. Hold first on. person. Hold first person. Can I, can first I, can person. I at least, can right. I at least finish? Can I finish the quote that I know you won't accept? But, but I it's, the it's third here. person. All right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So Amos Wilson was a psychotherapist, and on page fifty of this text. 
he calls Marcus Garvey the ultimate psychotherapist. But again, so I know you won't accept that. Right? Well, yeah, that doesn't make it. That's that's definitely not something you would. Because again, he calls so, so, he calls so Elijah he called, Muhammad the greatest Garvey, psychologist. Huh? He calls Elijah Muhammad the greatest psychologist of all uh, African psychologist of all time. Does that make him a Elijah Muhammadist? He was in Blueprint for Black Power. Didn't we just read that? That's what I'm saying. Like, like, like. So then, then, but then you can't be. Uh, exactly. That's weak evidence. That's very like weak. Like we evidence. literally just read that, right? <laughs> that's weak evidence, dude. Come on. Like, come on. No, but, no, but again, again, again. I, like, uh, he, again, again. I, I, I knew you wouldn't accept this, but again, for the audience, uh, this was his profession. He called Marcus Garvey the ultimate person in his profession. That's weak. All right. So let me let me look for another one. All right. That's weak. Anyway, so back to the back to the thing. So yeah, that's the reason why I would call it an evolutionary literature because the reality is that you as an individual or you as an organization or you as anything within a nation cannot do half of the things that he proposes because you're within another nation that would not even allow you to do it or that you have to get permission from that nation to do it. And a lot of times, even if you go back to 620, what he's doing is he's asking for permission from other people to get like pieces of the equity that they built for themselves, you know? Okay, so let me read this, please, on page 45. All right. I want to look for a moment at which I would call the legacy of Marcus Garvey. I want to know personally that it was the reading of the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey that did so much to transform my own attitudes about myself and my people. Not that I needed to be transformed from an assimilist I'm sorry, an assimilationist, integrationist, self-hating position, but I needed to develop a coherent ideological position. I was fortunate in my own upbringing to have been reared in a black community, to have been educated in black institutions, where loving black people and being concerned about the advancement of African people was just natural. It was something that did not have to be lectured or taught into me. It was something that was just a natural part of my growth and development. However, I must say, with my coming to New York City, Reading the books about Garvey and others, exposing myself to the bookstores, Michelle's bookstore, standing on the corner there with Irvin Porkchop Davis, who passed here recently, and hearing other spe- speakers, that sort of put it all in place for me and crystallized my ultimate sense of direction. On, the, on my shelf right now is a four-act play about Marcus Garvey. I have one more act to go, written about 10 or 15 years ago. It's been sitting there. I've been telling myself that I'm going to ultimately get around finishing that play. So you can see that my spiritual relationship with him has been quite intimate, intimate enough for me in my first writing efforts to seek to dramatize his life and philosophy in such a way that it could advance my own development and advance the growth and development of my people. He has been the center of my life ever since. I see myself as a descendant of Marcus Garvey and what Marcus Garvey was about. Okay. So, so, so do you accept that? I mean... I... The, the trouble is this, well, right? He literally calls himself. When, when I read that, when, when I heard that, I I think back to when I was younger, right? And like for instance, mm-hmm. one thing I, I you probably know, I'm not familiar with this, but my website is called African Blood Siblings, right? Yeah, and, I, I and don't like it. Anybody could tell you that African Blood Siblings, uh, uh, is is a homage to African Blood Brotherhood from Claude Easy. McKay. Yeah. Okay. Easy. So. You know, when I was younger... But that's not in the school, Look, and that's what I'm saying. Officer... Look, look. Go ahead. Look, Officer just read uh, recently uh, a passage from the Pro-Black Compendium of uh-huh. where I read, where I quote Claude McKay. Uh, Claude McKay is if we must die, you know? A long time ago, I went to this event, like Juneteenth or whatever, and they were asking us to call out the ancestors. And I called out the Claude McKay. Did you call yourself his son? Did you say that you dedicated your life to him? May, but look, maybe back then it was like, like I said, I named my organization. <laughs> I named my organization after him. Like, oh man, like, oh man. Like, but, but are you are you really going to use that to negate what I just wrote? What, what I'm what saying is that is that if I were writing a book on Garvey, and I and and it seems and the thing is that Garvey is in fact a really reputable, like a really excellent individual and and you know like like once you go garvey you never go you know steve harvey i guess i don't know but the point (laughs) the point the point is that you know uh you know like if i'm writing a book on garvey and how garvey is great and all that stuff 
I would expect that. I'm not. I I could I could allow. But he's writing a book on his own position. Yeah, I could allow. Not, I I'll allow mm-hmm. for it. How about that? I'll allow. I will allow that he in he's trying to express himself as a Garveyite, uh, in that uh in that uh in that text, and uh, and sure, uh, but even so, it's like. It it doesn't like even if we allow for that, it doesn't really, you know, negate the fact that, you know, engaging this book, Blueprint for Black Power, uh, is just not the same as. Uh, but but but, but if, like if I you I could see that I could see use that text I that see. I just wrote. I could see it a little bit, a little bit. But that's what I'm saying. And the thing is that again, it's tr- it's hard because, like I said, I, I'm an author. Okay. Mm-hmm. The mentality that I wrote uh, the Book of Power in is different from the mentality that I wrote, uh, what does it say, it's, uh, the Pro-Black Companion in. Okay? Then you change over time. Exactly. So, so the, the, the issue is that, uh, yeah, in, in regards to, like, in the, 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 the Pro-Black Compendium, would be that quote unquote classical black nationalism the same the same way how I'm talking right now, right? Oh, the same the way the way how you're talking right now would be like kind of how the pro black companion is written, or like the ideology the ideological framework I had on pro black compendium was written. So in the pro black compendium, you could see me kind of esteeming uh, Amos Wilson's book, even though I didn't finish it yet, obviously, right? But you could see me talking about Amos Wilson's book is actually pretty good and blah 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 in that book, but. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So in that book, that's what I was. That that's exactly what I'm saying. But in uh in the uh, in the book of power, it's like whoa, this guy is ridiculous. You get what I'm saying? So even yeah. though even though uh he like even if he says like like and the thing is this too that even when you're writing a book, you know like the process of writing a book and 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 trying to whatever, you know what it does is that like like like, like essentially. As a, as a as an author, I can tell you that the books are kind of independent of each other. One and two, sometimes you might make claims in a book, uh, you know, just just for the sake of, you know, of like like for instance, the editor might just have him, you know, like, huh, what do you think about Garvey? You know, like, like because he is an editor. Like I don't have an editor, so I kind of just write things, you know, as as I want them to to be read. But if you're engaging well, an I, editor, I think I think that, that there's a difference when you're describing your own position in light of the figure that you're talking. And that, but that also could be something that could also be like a literary technique uh, inspired easily, by him. Easily, easily, but but it, I mean that's speculation. Well, I mean it's speculation I mean, in the same sense as, you know, the 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 point the, the point being though that even if we allow for yes, he was a Garvey, even if we say he was a Garvey, the reality because he literally said it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, the thing is, it's like, like again, like I think, I think actually, because in the comment section, uh, Bitter Medicine asked, uh, I think he says, is there only Garvey and Garveyism, no one else? Oh no, 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 no. All right. Well, of I mean, not. In, of in, in, not. A, in another, in another, in another sense, though, I want to even ask, uh, like, is there only one type of Garvey? Like, 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 even if you are no. inspired, like I'm saying, like, even if you are inspired by Garvey per se, I still wouldn't necessarily. Put this book on par with like 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 I, I I kind of I can kind of appreciate more your uh your sentiment but I it's like if you're reading this book if you're reading uh Blueprint for Black Power it's 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 almost like it's almost nothing like Garvey and Garveyism you know uh, um, Garvey and Garvey. I'm sorry. Garvey I mean, it's, it's, it's almost not, sorry. A different level. I just meant it's not. It's almost nothing like Garvey. Uh, so actually, before like this is what well, I well, 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 if, when when I was reading out of context, sure. Well, I mean, if I if I just read the book as is, I wouldn't. I would. I I didn't get the impression of Garvey's at all. Because uh, because okay, honestly, like if you tell honestly, me honestly, later, it, mm-hmm. yeah, if you tell me later, oh, if you told me to read it. As if it were a Garvey, Garvey, Garvey literature, I probably still wouldn't see it, but I could kind of see why. I you don't say know it. how, if you've read Message to the People and you've seen Garvey's method, I don't know how you could see that Amos, because it's obvious. I mean, to me, it's really obvious because 
when I read Blueprint for Black Power, mm-hmm. I can reference areas of Garvey's text and his corpus of work. I don't and think show the same. Position. I don't. I don't know if if Amos Wilson had access to um, that book, Message to the People. You said Message to, to the People, right? The philosophy and opinions. You said Message to the People, didn't you? Uh, message to the people. I mean, that's a little bit. I mean, uh, if or if or um, either or. Uh, maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Yeah, I don't um, think at that point. I, just, I don't think it was published. Well, yet. if he was. Well, hold on. If he was in the UNIA, if he was working with um, Amy Jake Scarvey in the, because um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that he was part of ASCAC and part of um, similar institutions. You think he was working East with Amy Jake Scarvey? I don't. I don't if he was associated with her, maybe not working officially on an official level, I oh. find that somebody in his position to not have that, that would probably be a little hard to believe. Message to the people? But I don't think it was published yet. Huh? I don't think it was published yet. Message to the people? It was not published in, in 35? No. This was a secret text. Oh, no, okay, it was published in 1986. Never mind. No, it was published in 1986. Um, he... Yeah, he probably could. But either or, I mean, I mean, but but, but even if Maybe. he, but even if he did it, would he need that to articulate Garveyism? No, because all you have to do to well, articulate Garveyism. Message to the people is a little different. But let me let me say this though. I wanna I wanna go to this. So this is what I said in the in the pro black compendium on uh, Amos Wilson's Blueprint for Black Power. I said from ease of reading, you know, from a one to five, I said it was a three. I said it nearly. This is like. It's not an easy book. Yeah, I said nearly nine hundred pages. It would take a lot of discipline to read the book cover to cover in a month. Although well read and well researched, few people have read the book in its entirety. Each chapter makes for a very impactful essay. A book club organizer could assign chapters for discussion to make the book more readable. So I said direction from one to five. I have surprisingly I gave it a five. I said the word blueprint isn't an understatement. Amos Wilson outlines problems and solutions, and he does so with black power in mind. And then for scope, I said one to five, it would be a four. In terms of America and Western oppression, this book is very comprehensive. Yet it's not entirely pan-African in scope or material. Much of the research details the American experience and what Africans in America can do or have done in response. So the only thing that I would say is that this is a. It seems pre- like this is what this was my impression back then. But I would say in retrospect that this is actually stuff that America, African Americans can't really do. You know, in any sense. <laughs> you know, the, 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 so I, I, I was, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. The Marcus Garvey must go campaign thought the same thing about the UNIA. That the UNIA couldn't, uh, couldn't do what? Well, couldn't, couldn't be done. It, it was just undoable. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I mean, I understand why they would think that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. Even if look, the thing is this that. I mean, the the trouble is that, like, realistically speaking, they weren't necessarily wrong. Well, they're the ones who sabotaged them. So. <laughs> well, not just them. The the British and the uh and the and the and the French. Well, they were collaborators in the process. Exactly. So, but the the, the British and the French weren't going to necessarily allow it. So it's not like they were, they were unrealistic. You get what I'm saying? Like the idea that the British and the French would just sit by, uh, wasn't wasn't even like what it legit wasn't. It didn't make much sense. Uh. I mean, it, it, I think it could have been done, but obviously it wasn't done. So it's not even, it's not even so on and so forth. And that's the same with Amos Wilson's thing. It's like if you wanna, you could believe it could be done, but it's it's even more ludicrous to to think that the United States of America, well, like 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 for instance, you would have to, you have to like all of the ideas that he has involves. Uh, Appealing to the American government to pretty much no, come on, be, be, again, again. All right, most of them, ninety percent. Calling to work with African nations is bad. Ninety percent. Well, the thing is that you can't work with 90%. African nations. You can't work with African Why? nations outside so, so, of. So we we cannot we cannot invest with them. We cannot use our labor for them. We can't do anything. To with them a whatsoever. degree, to an extent, yes, but then to an, to another extent, no. You understand because to what extent, no. Uh, to the extent that if you are, if you become a threat, because like, the thing is this, a, a thing that people have to understand about na- nationhood is that, or the thing people have to understand about businesses, or, you know, like, like, all right, let's say, I don't know, maybe I'm assuming, I'll assume that you started a business, okay? When you started a business, mm-hmm. did you not start, did you not have to apply that business? The Secretary of State, yeah, of course, yeah, easily. You said you wrote to the Secretary of State, you said? You have to, you have to apply all the documents of the Secretary of State, yeah. Of the United States? No, of the of the state that you exist in. Okay, yeah, exactly. So it's like, 
to 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 some extent, like like you have to follow the like uh, like, and he keeps on emphasizing this: the rules and regulations, blah blah blah. blah. Everything kind of you have to run everything by the state in question, and the state in question is not going to sit by and allow allow you to to really. Uh, uh, so what do you think about the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party being registered in Tsarist Russia? Wait, uh, what do you think about that? I um, is that is that is give me some context. Is that Lenin's party? Is that the Bolsheviks. What do you think about oh, the, the what do you think about the fact that the Bolsheviks were a party before they took over? Well, that that that's that's a good thing. Yeah, but but that but 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 uh, notwithstanding that, uh, that's not to say that exactly. That's not to say that. Before they like that's not to say how you say it? uh they wait what about it I don't, I don't know what you're trying to say I, because, because I'm, 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 I was about to make the point do you disagree with the UNIA being registered in the state of Delaware no it's not the, so the much that line? it's not so much that well the, the, again the way how because the way how the the Bolsheviks did. It, was that they mm-hmm. eventually went to war with the state of Russia. Okay? And that's what Marcus Garvey called for. In no. in philosophy and opinions. To go to war with America? To go to war with the imperialists, eventually. Yeah. Okay. But that's what's that to do with Amos Wilson? Because he's essentially ah! Alright, but he but Amos Wilson never says it. In his text, that would you agree to that? Okay, so not, would you uh, agree? Hold on a second. In, in hold on a second. Military references. I'm gonna have to look at the military. Okay. Because, because I I remember him calling for us to build a military. I have to find specific. I mean, yeah, but that's what I, I'm saying. It's honestly, rhetoric. It, it's rhetoric. This would, it's rhetoric. It's rhetoric. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So so a psychologist who's not in that industry whatsoever. Yes. Rhetoric. Call exactly. For militant resistance. He can't call for military well, resistance. I mean, the thing is this, that like I said, every black person, if you talk about what you call Little Africa, every black person talking about Little Africa says, well, we gotta have self-defense, and we gotta, we gotta do it, we gotta do it better. Like, Amos it's Wilson, nonsense. exactly, Amos Wilson would, would not, I would not put him above the regular run-of-the-mill speakers on Twitter. I mean, obviously, they ins- he inspired them. I mean, that's a little a bit. I mean, somebody but, who is the most referenced psychologist in the Journal of Pan African Studies. I don't even know what this journal internet, is. I don't even know what this that, journal is. That's a really big problem if you're talking about revolutionary and even revolutionary capacity. Journal of Pan African Studies, said. Mhm. And you're saying that he's the most cited. He, he's 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 the most cited psychologist within that um, uh, journal. Uh, I can't think of anybody of all of the articles that I've read who is more cited than him. Of the psychology. So this is an international, an is, international. Is consortium. this a psychology journal? I don't understand. Not just like it. Okay, it's so African he's just studies in he's just, entirety. He's just the most cited on this web on this particular journal. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't. Mm-hmm. What about it though? I don't. I don't get it. I mean, well, you you obviously do not, you don't think that, um, you don't believe in the concept of a revolutionary theorist or theory. Um, I'm not, I didn't say that. I mean, I mean, Kwame Nkrumah would be a, a revolutionary theorist. And Amos uh, Wilson is not. Marcus Garvey would be. Um, and Amos Wilson is not. I don't see it. I don't see it. In, I, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I don't know if he is, but Blueprint for Black Power wouldn't be an example of it. I mean, I would say falsif- you, you should read Falsification of African Consciousness, yeah. the book that I just had, Men's Society, and all the... Basically, yeah. read, read all of his books. But we're talking about... Yeah, but I mean, look, they're, they're really not... They're really not... Which, like, I think... I think no, nah, they're, they're not they're not up to par. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of what... I mean... They're not. They're just mm-hmm. not. They're just not up to par. Well, uh, I, I, let, 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 let's say this. Let's say this. Let's say if you got um, just a random cross-section of people who are aware of his work and you ask them a question, what percentage would you say would think that he was a revolutionary? Think he was a revolutionary? Well, if they understood what revolution is, probably zero. No, if they understood who he is. I'm talking about the general population of 
black people who are aware of the of the text. Yeah, well, if they if they, if they thought he was a revolutionary, I don't think they'd understand what revolution is. Because what like <laughs> like like your idea of revolution again was just positive transformation, which is which is reform. Positive transformative change. In but that's not reform. The ruling class because does the ruling class remain? That's reform the question. Reform isn't transformative. Does the ruling class remain? No. In Amos well, Wilson's, eventually, no. eventually, but in Amos Wilson's text, it, it does, and that's the point. No, it doesn't. In the page that you, all right. Anyway, the ruling so class cannot look, exist. The ruling class cannot exist with African consciousness. Yeah, well, that's it's what you say, but that's not what Amos Wilson said. That's but, right. but well, that's. Where does Amos Wilson, that's, say, that's, that's Amos Wilson say that? Not even that's what. Where does Amos Wilson say that? That is not possible. All right, that that's is what I'm literally saying. Literally not possible. Afromac. I got you. All right. So anyway, we we don't want the podcast to go too long, otherwise people won't listen. So like, midnight, but so <laughs> but uh, it was cool. It was cool. I, I enjoyed the discussion. It was uh, tense at some moments, but it was good. It was it was just tense because you I don't know what's wrong with you, man. But <laughs> get, get I, your, I'm bringing context. Look, I love look, context. Look, look, African philosophy is look, contextual. If, if Amos Wilson was alive, I, I'd recommend him as a, a therapist. Or you know, as a as a as a <laughs> psychiatrist, like as a psychiatrist, you know, because uh, that's probably what he would be uh, uh, excellent at. But uh, uh, but yeah, you know I, you're gonna get a lot of hate for this one for your position. Like, uh, you get a lot of hate. Look, I'm used to it, man. Uh, but I could tell people, look, if y'all want some revolutionary text, you already know. <laughs> you already know. You got only time that you got the book of power. And I think that you guys should read that if you really want something uh, inspiring and informative. Uh, I, I would otherwise, say it is a good book. I'm not completely done with it, but it is it is pretty good. It, of course it is. But uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate your uh, your sentiment. But dang, somebody took away the like. I had seven likes, and then somebody took away a like. You remember that? That's cold. <laughs> it's cold, <laughs> bro. I, you said you said it. I will get some hate, and they were like, you know what? I'm gonna put some hate on this guy. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, so I want five more people to put some likes. I don't know. I'm just messing. It. But uh, uh, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate your time, Affirmac. Uh, I I, no I think that people you know can listen for themselves and determine whether or not it was never revolutionary, revolutionary. I think that as long as you're existing in a system, uh, or you're putting to exist in a system and not to overthrow it, uh, in the sense that realistically speaking. That's that's the, and and like the conditions of the system are going to persist, notwithstanding your advocacy otherwise. Uh, and I and I agree that he I would agree that he likes to do he likes to promote some sort of positive change. I agree that's on and so forth. But I also understand that those would not be happening in his lifetime or ours. You know, and and of course the the real solution for African people would be or particularly, particularly African people in America would be to repatriate. And build power on the continent, and then you could probably do something for America, uh, for African Americans here. But I don't even know why you would, uh, like, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. But otherwise, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to lose too many likes. Uh, although I mean, <laughs> but uh, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, thank you so much, brother. Well, is there anything else you want to say? Are you gonna, are you gonna? Uh, like, like, or, or you gonna need like some psychotherapists? You are gonna need some psychi- psych- what's it called? Psych- psychiatrists? I'll, I'll, I'll say that you know, people. It was it was a nice uh, discussion, and uh, mm. those who have the text and you know can watch this video can decide for themselves. Ugh. Um, I, I personally think that the honor of Amos Wilson will be maintained long after we're here, but uh, you know, everybody else could decide what they believe and hey, man. how they feel about black folk. About it. You gotta understand, black folk love evolutionary literature. You know what I'm saying? They love revolutionaries. <laughs> they love revolutionaries, man. I mean, look, are you look. Gonna say, the Book of Khalid, are you going to say that that one's revolutionary too? I don't know what the Book of Khalid is. What is that? Khalid Muhammad, um, autobiography, or biography. Uh, I never, never read it. I don't, I don't know. But, uh, like, like I, I'm going by what I read, right? I mean, or I'm going by the people in the world, you know, like, blah, 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 what was it called? The, the BPP, uh, Black Panther Party, uh, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, like a lot of it, if you really understand or really have a grasp of nationhood, you realize that, you know, like the white boy got it. The white boy got this is as long as we follow those paths. And of course, you know, you have, you know, your other people who are revolutionaries, uh, like, you know, uh, Nelly Fuller Jr. 
Uh, I'm just gonna name all of them, right? <laughs> Whatever, Daly Fuller Jr., Claude Anderson, you know, Power uh, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and of course, Claude Anderson would encourage all these other stuff. Now, Claude Anderson might not necessarily uh, call himself a Garveyite while he says the exact same nah, thing. While he says the exact same things as Amos Wilson. Not but, everything. But, uh... Not everything. But he says the same bit. thing. Some similarities, uh, some yeah, similarities, okay. but, but not everything. You know, but, of course, we would... When, when, when Claude Anderson says it, we would say, yeah, it's an evolutionary. But when Amos Wilson says it, we're like, you know, well, Amos Wilson... Claude yeah. Anderson doesn't classify himself as a revolutionary. No, I don't... Did, uh, I don't even... No, I don't even think he classifies himself as an African nationalist. Yeah, of course. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you classify. It matter what you write and whether it makes any damn sense. When it comes to the blueprint of black power, it didn't. But we'll leave the... We'll leave the... Well, hopefully... I, I actually would not encourage people to read 800-something pages unless they had to. But... Uh, <laughs> but... Because uh, it's, it's a large... It's a large time investment. I would say it's a distraction. Uh, not to say that my book is any small... I mean, my book is... Not the same size, obviously, but I would recommend obviously my literature because I'm that guy. Um, if I were to, if I were to not recommend my literature, I would recommend Garvey's literature, and uh, also you know the other texts that you know around that. Or if you wanted something really revolutionary, you would want Nkrumah's Nkrumah's uh, uh, handbook on revolutionary warfare. That's a real revolutionary book. And, and I would encourage every African to engage that one. But uh, otherwise, you know, I, I would say thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you guys had some uh, fun. I hope you guys saw, you know, what logic looks like versus uh, otherwise. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway. African logic with context indicators. I don't know what you're saying, man, but, uh, you know, <laughs> like I said, otherwise. But what did he say? <laughs> All right. All right, anyway, I'm going to end this dream. All right, guys, show me a whole tap. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think that was nice. Damn, man, I got...